<laughs> I'll wait till you come come back to your seat. Or maybe I should just do it now no, while you while you look right. ridiculous leaning forward. Yeah, I look. That's fine. <laughs> All go. right, what's up, people? How we doing? Welcome to this week's episode of Bacon is My Podcast, where we get to the crux of whatever we're talking about, which mm-hmm. could be literally anything. Yeah. Um, and when we do have guests, when we are fortunate enough to have guests, we do get to the center of those guests, or maybe we just drink and hang out with those guests, or maybe um, it's whatever. Super awkward. Just, yeah, super awkward. We're gonna make we're gonna make sure one of those things happens today, and we're gonna make sure one of those things happens with Mister Michael Skaggs from the band Outline in Color. Make it. Make it is my podcast. Make it. Make it is my. Podcast. Uh, thank you, sir, for hanging out with us today. Uh, how you doing? What's going on? What's happening? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing good. How are you guys? We are doing awesome. We're right. We're awesome. All right. We're doing podcasts and yeah, we are, like we are sort of doing music and stuff. Yeah, we're bringing entertainment to the masses in right. these trying times. <laughs> and by the masses, I mean ourselves we're entertaining ourselves right. in these trotting times a much needed commodity yeah we'll see <laughs> we'll see we'll see how needed it is yeah cool so where are we talk? where are you at today where are we talking to you from i'm in tulsa oklahoma nice did you know little known yeah. fact about tulsa um and i i only know this my uh my my girlfriend works as a um well she kind of does everything for um a band called Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. Mm -hmm. And what she does is she does lighting and stuff like that. They've toured Tulsa a number of times. And uh, did you know that Tulsa is a slut backwards? (laughs) I did indeed know this. (laughs) I'm sure he hears it all the time. I was surprised how many Tulsaites were not privy to that information. (laughs) She told me, she was like, I say that to literally everyone whenever we go there. And like, Half the people are like, what? Dag nabbit, you're right. <laughs> and then half the people are like, yeah, duh, whatever. Here's here's another little known fact. Like two or three weeks ago, yeah. Jim comes up to me and he, and he goes, because so we live in New York and uh, Long Island, New York specifically. I've been trying to move for years. And and it's it's insanely expensive and it's stupid. And, um, you know, you have to like work a million hours a week to uh, to to make your bills. And um, he he walks in one day into this this studio and he goes, "What do you think about Tulsa? Let's 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 move to Tulsa." Yeah, and I was like, w- w- "What? Excuse me." That was before we even spoke about uh, this. this is before, yeah, before we even like talked about. And then and then you said you were gonna come on the show, and I was like, "Hey, these guys are from fucking Tulsa." Uh, yeah, it's yeah. so, not too like, bad. I, I all I know is that uh, I know from her, and I know um, also from like touring and and being around other bands that Tulsa is a great live music area. Yeah, it's it's like low key a jam. Um, right. Billboard said like a year ago that we were like a emerging music mecca or something. Like yeah, that. yeah, which is great. So, um, as someone who are you born and raised? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. I, I lived out of the state for a number of years, but I, I came back like two, three years ago, and yeah. So, so what? Um, what about Tulsa makes it a great live music town? Like, what? What is it? Well, we we have a like a definite like downtown area, and there's like a number of of uh, clubs downtown of varying sizes. You know, there's like a a couple bars that have like real small caps, you know, like hundred or under a mm-hmm. hundred. But then there's like uh, the Vanguard is like a five hundred cap room. Kane's Ballroom is like a two three thousand cap, and right there's like a, a ballroom that's or not a ballroom. Uh, what is it? Uh, the Brady Theater. It's like three four thousand, and then and we also have the BOK Center, which is like a big arena. So we we can pretty much house just about any size artist, like despite it being like a kind of small city, I guess. Yeah. Um, so like a lot of times, um, you know, we'll get artists that like, you wouldn't think that t- would, they'd come to Tulsa, Oklahoma, but I think it's just because we have the, uh, the infrastructure for it. Um, 
it's it's kind of wild like it's it, it's kind of always been that way too even when i was a kid there were just like a multitude of venues and of varying sizes even on the diy side of things that's crazy too because because around here i mean pre-pandemic mm -hmm. it, it's like okay well where could we play and even as um even as a decent sized artist before you start getting into like thousands mm -hmm. the only room you could really play was was Re revolution yeah which we have there's a, a bunch of places that'll fit 50 yeah. people yeah then there's like one or two places that'll fit uh between 200 and 400 people and then it immediately ramps to like 1200 yeah right that's tough right. but also like the the one thing that i've that i've found um as uh as a as a band touring and stuff there's definitely some areas and i'm sure you as a touring uh touring artist as well there's some towns and there's some areas where man people just come out yeah yeah you yeah. know and, there's and, like nothing and it, else to do there so that's just like the thing you know well I, yeah. I i feel like that's part of it because um i i grew up in indiana i grew up mm -hmm. in west lafayette indiana and there are certain sections of indiana that man you play show there everybody goes you that's know so and then there's certain areas of indiana where you play a show there nobody goes right and it's just kind of the way it is yeah um i found the same thing about chicago ohio tends to be kind of hit or miss um you've got like uh places parts of michigan that are just awesome where everybody yeah. just goes out right um parts in pennsylvania where everybody goes out you know so what always interests me is like okay what makes a town a town where people will go out to see music is it that there aren't a lot of things going on. I don't know because there's a lot of places in Indiana where there's not a lot going on and they still don't go out, you know? That's so, true. so what uh, do you think makes Tulsa a place where like people just want to go out and see live music or they want to support live music or do you back up that, that it's a great place to go? No, I mean, you, you make an interesting point. Um, I think that for Tulsa specifically, it, granted, it's it's evolved and changed genre wise over the last like 10, 12 years that I've been mm -hmm. playing around here. But um, there's just always been a strong local scene um, be like back in the day. It was super, super heavy beat down music. You know, nowadays it's it's more like rock uh, indie. But in, you know, several years back, it was, you know, pretty in line with the music that outline was is making or was making. Right. Um, so I think I think that that's a major attribute as to why it's always been a good place for for music, because when you have a lot of young people playing music, you know, they're connected, they're in school, they're, you know, yeah. or in yeah. college or they work jobs and, you know, they're just naturally connected to a lot of people that are also young. And it's it's easy for them to build uh, like grassroots fan bases with, you know, the people that are already here that they're friends with and you know, from there, it kind of spider webs and builds. So, um, I mean, I can speak from personal experience when outline first started playing shows like 10 years ago, like the people that came out were like people that have been friends with us for years and it slowly grew and built from that. But, um, I think that that's, there's just a lot, it's really easy for a band starting out to find support if they're, you know, friendly and likable and they make good music and they connect with people at shows because there's a lot of people here that are into music and, it's just like if you have one person that <clears throat> comes to a show and they come for, you know, one local band that they really like, sometimes sometimes they'll be really open to the the bands that are playing before them or after them. And then, you know, you've got uh, somebody that came to see the headliner, but they left like a big fan of the opener. And that, that happens a lot here. Right. Yeah. Like uh, uh, one of Outline's last tours that we that we we did where we came through Tulsa, we brought two bands that had never played Tulsa before, but we just knew based on their sound and their aesthetic and like what they had going on for them, that Tulsa was going to love them. And sure enough, we played a show and it was a pretty decent turnout. And uh, the two bands that had never played here before, they had a great, great crowd reception. And it was just like, you know, people co go on shot tours and they'll play a show in Tulsa and it'll be like pretty good or the energy at least will be really good. And, it's funny because like people go on tour and they see they're playing Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they're like, "What the fuck is that?" And, and <laughs> but then they, they hit it and they're like, "Man, Tulsa was memorable. Like, I want to go back there for sure." That's that's what I keep hearing, man. That's what I keep yeah. hearing. I've never I been. I haven't been fortunate enough to play Tulsa, honestly. I haven't. Oklahoma is one of the states that I've never played. Um, 
And, uh, and I've, I've heard that so many times. I've heard that from friends of mine that toured through, they're like, man, people like people come, people come for the bands that aren't their bands, you know, and they, and they'll, they buy merch and support touring bands and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's just awesome. And one of the things I have to say is like, I got to commend you for, um, just the thought process of like finding a band that you want to bring on tour with you and saying, my town will love them because this industry is notoriously so, um, me, 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 oh, com yeah. competitive, but it's weird because it's not competitive for anybody that's successful. It's no. competitive for everybody that thinks that they need to be competitive to be successful. They, they, for some reason, you know, there's this whole idea of like, well, you know, uh, come support my band. And I'm I'm either not gonna worry about the bands that are with us, or or actively I'm going to you know uh, try and make sure that my fans are my fans and stuff like that. Sure. I mean, so just I, to hear that that you guys like that's one of the reasons that I think probably uh, adds to you guys building and being more successful is right. just the idea that you're that you're like hey hey man we're like we want to bring our fans something that they're going to like so then they're going to realize that like yeah we're with you we're, sure. we're all on the same team here we're all fans of music so like yeah. if it's if it's yeah. good it's great i want to play with every band that's awesome you know like totally and i mean yeah. when i was younger and more immature I've, I've definitely been guilty of those tendencies you just we just all we all yeah, are yeah, we sure. all are for sure but um, you know, as i've gotten older i've just kind of realized that like you were re we're really doing i mean we do this for the fans but at the end of the day it's self-expression and yep. if, you're, if you're not expressing yourself for the sole love of it then you're, you've already lost you know there is no competition the competition is being able to express yourself like fully and and whether or absolutely. not that, that's a personal thing you know absolutely that's and, awesome and once that's, I that's leaned, huge for sure and and once i leaned into that i i started um I don't know. I I, I just want to anybody that is willing that wants help from me that thinks that I can help them. I'm always down to like share any information or any anything I've learned along the way, because fuck, man, if somebody was telling me five years ago that you could do this, this, this or shit could have taught me something that I didn't know. You know, maybe I could have shaved some months or some years off of my trials yeah. and tribulations. Absolutely, you know? man. Well, and, and even to add to that, it's like uh, I, I always find that like ever since I was a little kid, I remember being a kid and, and finding a new band. And the first thing I wanted to do when I found a new band was show it to all my friends. Totally. Yeah. Right. So, so then becoming an artist and being in a band later, that doesn't change. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, I still, if I see a band or if a band plays with us and they're awesome, the first thing I want to do is be like, everybody I know needs to see this band <laughs> because totally. they're awesome. They're yeah. so good. You know, Especially like, when you know people that are like involved with the team or are on oh, the yeah, man. band or like whatever. It's just like, I don't know. I want to see everybody win. And when people get win near me, like it makes me excited. I feel like that that success. Absolutely. Is closer, you know, and, and, and it, uh, you know, I, I mentioned this a, a couple episodes ago when, when we had Mick it on uh -huh. it is it's super important. Like when you go to see a show, especially like we we have a lot more people from new york listening here um when you go to a show where you're, you're seeing a headliner check out especially nowadays because you have access to spotify you have access to youtube yeah you, you have access to anything you want and google everything check out your opening bands yes it's it's crucial it's crucial to check out your opening bands and i checked out opening bands i checked out you know uh, again i said make it yep make it from rivals we actually had him on a couple of a uh, couple of weeks ago and that's how i found out about them is is because i went to go see red jumpsuit and through red jumpsuit yeah, yeah. i found them and then you know it was funny because uh last year i actually so I, I do a lot of the Spotify mixes and, you know, discover weeklies and stuff like that. And that's how I came up with, with catching you guys um, eat your heart out came up mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, these guys are fucking great. And then sure enough, last year you put out a song with the singer of rivals and uh, you know, it, you have to like, 
you have to check out your opening bands because that's that's Ooh. what the future is. The, well, the headliners, you know, are going to be there, but the 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 openers are the future. Totally, yeah. and a lot of and not every time, you know. There's definitely like manufactured packages and stuff. For sure. Of course, like a booking agent puts together, but a lot of times, like the the opening bands are like hand selected by you know the headliners or like the top top acts on the bill so mm -hmm. you know a lot of times it's like it's the headliners intention that they want you to see that band because like they discovered them or like they know somebody that's affiliated with them and they wanted to give them a shot to like reach new fans because they knew that you know the, the fan base that they possess and the people that will come out when they go on tour so it's i don't know i mean i understand like you know when you go on tour you guys know like sometimes it's it's exhausting to to be you know, inside from seven to 11 right. every single night and watch every single, you know, sometimes you just need quiet and right. It has nothing to do with what bands on stage or anything like that. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I have a genuine appreciation for um, any band nowadays, especially that, um, you know, puts the effort into selling tickets and bringing people out. And, you know, it, it, it's, and put in doing their thing on stage, you know, like it's just it's it's humbling and it's it's uh, it's something that like maybe I, I kind of took for granted a little bit when I was younger. But now it's like I, I try to catch every band set that I can, even when like I'm not really feeling it. Well, you never know what's going to inspire you also. You yeah. know, Ooh. like I, I can't tell you how many times that I've um, played a show and then been in the audience for the rest of the bands and saw something even from a band that i maybe i wasn't feeling you know but there's something that they did something that the how the singer communicated with the crowd how the how the drummer handled something how you know something happened and i was inspired by it and totally. something taught me something something made me go into my next show with a better handle or a different idea or another trick in the bag of tricks or something like that because man, you can learn, you learn from everything you learn yeah. from everybody, you know, totally. and it's, it's, uh, to see somebody's connection with a crowd and draw from it is a, is a pretty amazing thing. And you never know, you never know where that line, like, okay, he saw he, rivals because he went to see another band and then he found you guys through Spotify. And then he told me about you guys. So then I started listening to you guys. And so then I share, you know, and it's like, that's how it goes. It's that domino effect and that's how it works. And that's what we're all kind of doing. Yeah. And, totally. you know, to, to embrace that and to be a part of that is, is super cool. And so, um, you know, like I said, you, you just, just the fact of you saying like, you know, if we find a band, even if they're not from here and we know, our crowd will like them. The presence of mind to know your crowd means that you care about your crowd. Oh, the presence sure. of mind to know what your crowd shows. is going to like shows that you give a shit. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that yeah. that's why your crowd is your crowd. And that's why you're able to do the things that you're able to do. And that stuff uh, speaks a lot to me. I, I, I love that. And I, I find that um, inspiring. And I, and I think that's super cool. I, I appreciate that, man. I mean, I'm not delusional. Like, I, I mean, we're not the biggest band in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but we couldn't even be doing what we're doing on the level that we're doing it if we didn't have people that appreciated it and consumed it, you know, like it, it, just oh, could, yeah, man. it just couldn't happen. So there's this symbiotic relationship between fan and artist that should exist because totally you're feeding each other, you know, like we, I can't, I can't give people the music that they want without some sort of like life stability or um an ability to go to the studio or shoot videos or you know there's just no way to get it out there um without people who appreciate it so i am yeah. endlessly appreciative to everybody that listens to us even if it's like old stuff that like you know i wasn't singing on like i've been in the band since you know it was conceived so like i i appreciate every listener what? you know that's that's something that, that we wanted to talk to you about because we we've talked to we've talked about it on our podcast mm -hmm. is so we're both singers and we became singers out of necessity. Oh, and... We have something in common. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So, so, so like, we're, so we're like you guitar started players, off, you started off as a keyboard player <laughs> yeah, and then you became a bass player backing vocalist. Mm -hmm. And now here you are, however many, what was it like 10 years? Right. Yeah. And, and now you're, now you're a 
like a lead vocalist. Yeah. So, so t- talk about that journey. Like how, how did you find it within yourself? Because some people are, uh, I, I scream in my music. He doesn't scream in his, but like, I'm not good at, um, that. <laughs> he, he hasn't tried. He's, he's a <laughs> wuss. Like he's, he's like really good at singing. He's like, I don't want to damage my voice. And it's like, well, you gotta feel that. Sometimes you gotta, <laughs> sometimes you gotta just reach for it. Just like I've, say, screw it. I've damaged it. Yeah. <laughs> I but please that. go. I feel <laughs> that for sure. Yeah. But um, but yeah, like talk to us about that journey of of being like pretty much all the way back and then like sure. working working your way up front and and now you're a screamer. So where did you find that voice? How how did you find that voice? Were you encouraged by any of your bandmates, that kind of stuff? <laughs> um yes and no. Um I love that I love that laugh, it's so telling. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because like um uh, i tried out for vocals initially for the band but the initial oh. vi- vision for outlining color was to have a single vocalist that did screaming and singing kind of like a maddie mullins kind of situation mm-hmm, and kelly right. quinn kind of thing and uh, i was not a very good singer at the time and um you know, we, we ended up making an exception, but like I, tr- I tried out and the band was just like, it was just uh, the two guitar players at the time, but they were just like, you know, they, we knew each other from the scene. We had played in other local bands and um, they were just like, we want you to be in the band. We don't know like what yet, but like we want, we're going to find a place for you because we want you to be a part of this. So that's kind of how I got on keyboards. And, um, you know, we started writing and making the the debut music and, um after we had got like a little bit of traction we got this like kind of hot shot manager and he had us come out to la and and showcase for some record labels and stuff and at the time we were two guitar players me on keyboards two vocalists and um we get on stage and we play for like sumerian and pantheon agency and we played through our shit and we like felt like we did pretty good. We looked like fucking bums with like gym shorts and like toms <laughs> and like fucking total losers. Shut up. And uh, they we fi- <laughs> we finished playing and um, they're like, "Your bass player's sick," and we're like, N- "No, what? What?" <laughs> and they're like, "Your bass player? Where's your bass player at?" And we're just like, oh, "Hold on, I'm getting a phone call. I gotta decline it." Uh, your bass player, uh, where's he at? And we're just like, oh, we don't have one. And they're like, you don't have a bass player. Why not? And we're just like, oh, you know, like everybody puts the keys on the back track. We thought it would be cool to put the bass on the back track. And they were like, yeah, no, that's aesthetically <laughs> unappealing. And y'all shouldn't do that. And you should get a, you should get a bass player or can you play bass? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, you should play bass. And, uh, so we like left that showcase and like before we even got back to the place we were staying, it was like determined that I was playing bass. And I was just like, all right, <laughs> well, I'll start learning all the songs. Nice. And I, I'd been in like band and stuff in high school and stuff. So I, I was like, I mean, not like amazing at any instruments, but I, I could like play drums and play bass and play guitar a little bit. You so can I pick up a if, bunch of things. If okay. my current, yeah. so, so basically like my current situation is my bass player left. And uh, so uh, you know what? I was like, eh, we can either run tracks and we, we did like a live stream where we recorded it and mm-hmm. we did like like they said. And I was like, mm, I, I'll just play bass. Right. So, it, so yeah, yeah, you just need right. a bass player. <laughs> yeah. So I, I started playing bass for, you know, a number of years mm-hmm. and uh, like 2019, we had had like a bunch of unfortunate things happen like we we had got booked on the first like supporting tour that we had got book, booked on in years and uh we got like first day we left and we have vehicle issues and we get to day two because we had to cancel day one because of oh. aforementioned vehicle issues um we we get to like austin texas and we stay the night we play night two on the sh- on the tour and we're driving from like Dallas to Austin or from Austin to Dallas rather for the night three. And our engine just like explodes on the highway, like oh. seven miles from the venue too. It was ridiculous. Dude. Um, so like we, we just had like a kind of a, a shitty year and things weren't going so hot. And um, we finally got a, a lucky break and this booking agent that we were trying to work our way in with um, offered us like, like four or five dates with slaves 
And uh, we had coincidentally got offered this other tour with like, I think it was Oceana doing their like their 10 year anniversary tour or something okay. like that. And uh, we were able to like put it together where we could do like a little like 10, 14 day run, something like that. Nice. And uh, we're getting up to like the week before the tour and we're about to like start rehearsing and getting ready to, to go. And we just got uh, a message from our old vocalist and he was he uh, was going through some like life changes and basically just said that like because of everything he had going on and because the former drug implications with like slaves when Johnny was affiliated um that was like a trigger for him personally because he's a an ex addict mm -hmm. and uh he he just he couldn't do the tour and that that was regardless of like what that meant for him in the band and we're just like fuck because oh, we had just got this booking agent that we had been trying to get to book us to give us these like five six dates so like in our mind like it wasn't like really a possibility for us to drop the shows because that would pretty much like seal our fate with that agent. Like if we, if he yeah, went on a limb, no choice. there's no yeah. choice at that point. Yeah. We just kind of mark our name forever. So we we're just right. like, we got to find a way to do this tour. And, um, you know, we looked at having some fill-ins come in, like some other screamers to come in and, and fill, fill in for us. But the more we got to thinking about it, like it, there were definitely like screamers that would be like, capable like we talked about like jake krueger from like vultures and um a couple other people that are like really talented and capable but we just got to thinking about it and it was just like man it's one thing to be able to like perform and be a screamer and like you know do okay but it's another thing to like memorize like a shit ton of lyrics and right. like you know <laughs> yeah. be able to like convey them with emotion and stuff and right you gotta you know, sell it yeah and you know i've been around for everything and was around for the lyric writing of all of the songs that we put out and um so it was just like most of the stuff was just like second nature like you know it's just always in my head like i didn't have to like look up the lyrics or reference the songs or anything and right we wow. kind of were just like well there's no way in hell i could like do that and play bass like this is not it's too too much like there's a lot of like really stuff that goes against the the patterns on the bass and i'm just oh frank, yeah frankly not talented <laughs> enough to, to pull there's, that there's, off there's not many that are that's <laughs> for sure um but i don't have a problem admitting that like that's just hard and uh you know i can i can sing like and play acoustic like a little bit but like you know you start getting techie and i'm i'm out yeah right. and uh anyway uh we just kind of determined that john our our uh our other singer he he, he had played in a pop punk band prior to outlining color where he played guitar and sang. So like playing bass and singing was like pretty reasonable for him. And, um, man, he fucking just did, pulled it off in like a week and was just ripping. So we, we, uh, we got on like the first three, four nights of the tour and we we're kind of freaking out. Like it was scary, but after like the first couple of nights, we started to hit a groove and <clears throat> we're like, Oh damn. Like, we can we can make this work like this this is all right and to to kind of sum it up like halfway through that tour we got a, a message from our our old vocalist and he was basically just like uh he was convinced that we were talking shit about him when when we were on the road and <laughs> right. we really weren't like we're you know like we had some fans you know that have come to every single show and um you know they're like friends and family to us and when they would be you know obviously they would come out and be like where's your other guy and you know we we would you know tell them like you know what was going on um mm -hmm. but like we weren't we weren't talking shit or anything like that but we got this message and he basically was just like i'm out like you know this is it for me uh don't reach out to me i'll reach out to you and i'm ready like and uh that was kind of it but um we got like halfway through this tour and we got on a groove and for some reason, like just, I don't know if it was less people in the van or like the dynamic between the people or what, but like things just went really easy and smoothly, like on and off stage. Like, and, and sometimes we had had like issues with, you know, just being a unit on tour, you know, and like, cause yeah. it well, takes the a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Totally. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we got to this point in the tour where, uh, I'm trying to think where we were at. We were like in, 
like New York, I, I believe, or New Jersey. Fuck. We were up, up on the East Coast somewhere, and we were either going to drive north to Rhode Island and play a gig that was like completely out of the way that we'd have to immediately backtrack the route that we came and then drive like another seven hours to the next place. Or we had a friend, uh, Andrew Bayless, that we'd known since like the beginning of our career. And uh, we're just like looking at like, you know, he lived in, a, in Cleveland, which was on the way to our next show mm -hmm. and uh, or the show following the show that we were considering playing or dropping or whatever. Um, and uh, basically, like we we're like, well, we're going to spend a few hundred dollars on hotels, like if we take the night off of the show or if we play it regardless or Andrew Bayless will charge us two hundred dollars to go co-write a song and we can stay in his basement. <laughs> so we're just like, fuck it. We're just like, fuck it. You know, let's just see what happens. Like we've been having a couple of good shows. Like we're starting to hit a groove. Let's see what happens when we write a song because like, you know, our dude just told us he was out. So like we're either this tour is it for the band or like, we're going to carry on. Or it's a new like beginning. Yeah. yeah. And um, man, we wrote this song with Andrew Bayless and it just went so fucking awesome that, at the end of the writing session, when we were about to leave to hit the the rest of the tour, um, we we're just like, we have to work with you. Like we have to do an album. And Bayless was just like, he made us like a really good deal. And uh, we didn't have the money for it, but like, it was a really, really good deal to where like, we were like, we're never going to be able to get this deal again. Right, right. Figure it out. We'll, yeah, we'll, make it happen, we'll yeah. figure it out. So like yeah. we confirmed recording with him in february like in like november with no money and we're just like we'll figure it out we'll figure it out and um shit we figured it out <laughs> we got <laughs> we got an investor and um he came in like right at the last second and and funded uh imposter syndrome part one and two and nice um it that's that's kind of how i i guess i slipped into my position <laughs> Well, so something that that is really awesome, and I and I pointed this out to Jim initially, is like even throughout the pandemic and everything like that, you guys have put out music. Yeah, like you've been doing it. That's inspiring. At least Thank once you. a month, and that you know, providing content for the people that listen is super important, especially right now. Is 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 that like? coming out with something new it it doesn't necessarily have to be a full record sure. anymore it's just not it's not the way that people consume things anymore it, but right. the the more often you put something new out the more important it is but you guys continued like you hit the pan we hit the pandemic and you guys put out an ep you guys are continuing to put out new singles uh dude uh, like today's western is fucking awesome yeah Thanks, uh yeah man uh you I was know jamming so, that a f I, like i jammed that a few times on repeat because I, I love that riff like, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah totally dude so, oh my god so As a guitar like, player i'm just like what so so how <laughs> how does that <laughs> yeah how does that how does that work for you guys there are, are you, like you've got an sm7b there so do you do you guys do a lot of like tracking on your own and send it out or how how do you guys keep up with all this stuff especially with the pandemic or did you go in and record this prior to and then um, now they're working on it all of the above <laughs> yeah. um, right. we it was kind of coincidental with imposter syndrome part one and two because we actually wrapped i want to say three days before the lockdown order and wow. we we put ourselves under a great like part of the deal for us doing the record the way that we were doing it was that uh we only had like a month to do it and we didn't write songs prior to like we wrote them in the okay, studio everything was like, in that month yeah everything holy uh, shit yeah we wrote like 11 songs and in, in a month like fully produced it was wow. pretty wow. crazy it was down to the line too you know and uh because of that like dude i mean we're getting to the studio at like noon every day, but like, you know, get getting up at like nine, um, you know, getting ready, getting coffee and lunch and whatever. And, um, and work until like nine, 10 PM. And yeah, um, every night we leave and it's dark and we're veed and we eat dinner and then we crash. And we, 
we're kind of like a little out of tune with like what the Corona stuff as it was building, you know, it kind of just all hit at once for us because we were so focused on the album that we weren't watching TV. We weren't listening to the news, like just tunnel um, vision and Oklahoma is like pretty conservative anyway. So it was a minute before we were feeling some of the things that were felt like elsewhere in the country, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I just remember like me and me and Bayless, we would go to this grocery store every day after the studio to grab stuff for dinner. And there was this mountain of water bottles, like it, like a huge display that was like 10 feet tall floor, like floor to ceiling almost. And um, that like two days and they were selling them for like it was like six cases for ten dollars or something like that. It was just like <laughs> ridiculously cheap. Those were and, the days. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I remember when water was cheap. <laughs> so, uh, but two days after Bayless, Bayless leaves, I go to the same grocery store and I walk in and they're all gone. There's like two left on the pallet and it's like disheveled. And I looked down and the price tag was like three for $10. Like they had like <laughs> doubled the price right, on yeah. it because so, of demand. And that was like my first, like, Whoa, what's going on here? Right. And, <laughs> and um, so like that shit hit. And we were locked down. Like we didn't leave the house for basically like a month, I think. And um, that time I was like going crazy because I had spent like the last, you know, month plus being just hella productive every day to like right. not being that productive and not having much business. And um, yeah, it was just like a crazy time. So I just like got with the guys and I was just like, yo, I'm really motivated to make content. Like, let's just keep this rolling. Like people need shit right now because like, they like all, TVs fucking canceled. Like nobody's right. putting out yeah. albums because they can't tour. I was like, people need fucking something. And there's people right. that are paying attention to us right now. So like, let's give them stuff. And yeah. um, that's, yeah. what, that's yeah. what led to like the covers and like the collab track with dropout Kings and like, you know, just anything that we could, I actually have a, a track that was one of the first ones that we did last year is coming out next month. It's like an EDM collab. That's, that's going to be pretty sick. I'm really excited nice. about it, nice. but um you know we we're just like let's just do everything like let's just get out there and one of the things we really wanted to prove with imposter syndrome was that like we can write whatever kind of music that we want you know like um you know granted like it falls under the scene umbrella mostly but like we, we have a lot of dynamically different sounding songs on imposter syndrome and, and part oh, two yeah. is, is no is no exception and and We've actually written several songs. We have another EP that's like pretty much on deck, just waiting. And um, it's the same deal. Like we're, we're just doing whatever we're inspired by, like whatever we want to write is what we write. So we were just like, why not do a collab track with a trap metal band? Like, why not do a collab with a, a dubstep artist? Like, you know, that's, we've always, that's perfect. That's 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 awesome. Yeah. That's one of the things that that honestly I, I thought was super cool that I wanted to kind of ask you about um, both like your your guys writing process, because it's so varied because you're, you're kind of free to do so many things. And um, as as a writer and as a as an artist, like I appreciate that. I, I love so many different styles of music that I always want to incorporate different things into what I'm doing. And um, I'm wondering kind of how you guys kind of uh, how you guys balance that out and what your writing process is, especially because really there's there's two of you that have been in the band since the beginning. Right. You know, you've had members in and out and in and out and in and out. Um, but there have been some lineup changes and stuff. So you've got these two constants. And how do you kind of juggle that with the writing and putting stuff out and bringing in other influences and stuff like sure. that? Uh, because like literally your songs are all over the place, but they're all over the place in a, in a controlled and good way to where they don't not fit with each other. Right. There's some sort of cohesiveness. That yeah, no, exactly. Together. Like I, I love it's bands that are all over the place. I, I love, you know, like I, I think back to bands like Mr. Bungle and, you know, like things, things like that, that I really like. Yeah. Um, I'm a Mike Patton fanboy to begin with, but uh, just the fact that there's so many different styles that happen there um, to make that cohesive is not easy. You know, like I, I, I know that, well, it's not easy for me. So, so sure. if it's, if it's super easy for you, that's awesome. I want to know how you do it. Um, um, how do you guys go about that writing process? Sure. Well, um, you know, 
the bands definitely had like you know somewhat of a revolving door of members throughout the years but myself and cj are uh are like day one members and john right. was our, our first singer on on cd he, and he he left for a while when casey was in the band but he came back and the same with Austin. Uh, he was our, our debut drummer. So basically the mm -hmm. lineup that we have now is all comprised of members that were on our debut release. So it's like, yeah, it's changed, but it's all but like, back, OG, yeah. yeah, it's all OG members, just like different, you know? Right. Um, so that, that, that part of it helps. Like, you know, we've known each other forever. There's no like weird dynamics, like within the band, you know, we're just like homies and, um, you know, like we're, we're a professional and, you know, or we, at least we try to be, <laughs> um, but like, you know, we're just friends and, and that makes it kind of easy. Like we all have love for each other and, um, you know, appreciate each other for who we are as people, not just like as musicians and touring people. Um, and I think that that kind of helps a lot. But also like we all have crazy different influences. Um, I've always been into like heavy music and into hip hop. Those have kind of been my my divergencies. Mm -hmm. um, but like uh, so that's where like, I don't know, some of the 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 heavier edge and some of the like trappier consistencies that our music come from. But, you know, John is probably has the most comprehensive knowledge of bands that exist, like within our, our scene um, from like the biggest of big to like some of the smallest of the small bands. Like he's very like with it. And um, that, I think that that's where a lot of our like scene sensibility comes from, but he's also really into like top 40 music. So he has like a, um like a pop sensibility i guess you could say mm -hmm. and, you know cj is a producer so he um he records all different kinds of music and a lot of times it's not like his choice as to what kind of music it is it's like cool. whatever the clients are writing right and um but he also has like an eclectic weird taste like he's into that poppy artist and like um he's into some country and like um and then like our drummer Austin, like he's got his own tastes that are like unlike anybody else in the band. So I think that like it's like a combination of the fact that we're all over the place musically and we, we all kind of want to like like uh, we, we all want everybody to be stoked about the songs we're making, you know, so like yeah. we try to allow everybody to have something in the music that makes them feel like it's theirs and. I think that that's where some of the, the craziness comes from because we're not all into the same stuff. So sometimes we end up just putting together some things that like none of us would have thought of individually, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. I love, Pause. I love that mix. What's that? Pause. Pause. I'm pausing. Pause. Sorry. I got to pee. So I could, bad. I could talk to you about this forever. So, uh, no so we're going to, we're going to pause the, and we're going to edit. <laughs> we're going to pause. Cause I got to pee. Cause he's got to pee. pee. So Hell yeah. He's unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> so no that's pretty awesome i'm i'm uh i'm definitely a fan of that i've always tried to um kind of incorporate different styles as much as i can into the music that i'm writing as well um which is which is tough sometimes to kind of make it fit and to make it work totally and one that's thing i appreciate <laughs> yeah totally right it's like it's like okay how do i not abandon this whole thing that i have going because i wanted to put this um because i wanted to put this keyboard part in or because yeah. i wanted to put this this uh funk part in the middle i wanted to put a funk breakdown in this song how do i make that work and not fucking ruin the song totally it's like a <laughs> because type of, type the progression of makes me want to go there so no that's pretty awesome i'm i'm uh i'm definitely a fan of that i've always tried to um kind of incorporate different styles as much as I can into the music that I'm writing as well. Um, which is, which is tough sometimes to kind of make it fit and to make it work. Totally. And one That's thing I appreciate. <laughs> yeah, totally. Right. It's like, it's like, okay, how do I not abandon this whole thing that I have going because I wanted to put this, um, because I wanted to put this keyboard part in or because yeah. I wanted to put this, this, uh, funk part, in the middle, I wanted to put a funk breakdown in this song. How do I make that work and not fucking ruin the song? <laughs> totally, it's like a tight because road, tight the progression road. makes me want to go there, but fucking, it's weird. I know, know exactly so. what you mean, and it's just like when the music just kind of like takes you there. You yeah, want, you want to be able to like like when it makes you feel something, you want to you want to like you have to 
Yeah. And you want other people to feel that too, like the way that you feel it. But sometimes I feel like some of it's production. Some of it's like, you know, we're not there on our musical journeys yet or like our prowess isn't quite like matriculated completely. But, um, you know, I, I don't know, like, uh, sometimes I feel like it's effortless and it just happens and I'm like, fuck yeah. That's the like, best, crap. right? Yeah. Oh, but God. other times I'm like, man, I want to make something like that. And I, just, oh, I like, know I can't, I can't. I, get I, there. I often try and shove that like square peg in the round hole where I'm just like, no, this is going to fucking work. Yeah. I'm going to make it fucking work. But I, then there's I those times that. where it's like, it immediately happens and you're like, dude, this is the shit right now. This is totally. the best ever. I actually had one of my homies over earlier and he's getting into recording. He's an amazing singer. He actually sang on some of our demos like before John was in the band, like way, way, way back in the band. Long time friend. Nice. Um, and he, he plays in this cover band that's really sick. They they get paid lots of money to play casinos and shit. It's super yeah, that's dope. That's what cover bands do. Yeah, totally. Cover bands do, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's trying to do more recording and stuff like that. And um, he was asking me about Ableton today and I just like, you know, I opened up a session and um, he was just like, well, how, how's it work? And blah, 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 blah. And, and uh, I opened it up and I just started going on splice and clicking samples. And there was this 808 and he's like, Ooh, I like that. And I, right. I just like <laughs> pulled it in and I just made it like a boom, 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 or some stupid thing. And then I dropped a drum sample over it. And uh, it was like, you know, a semblance of a beat going on. And uh, he was just like, wow, that's so sick. And you just did that in like three minutes. And I was just like, damn, I just did that in three minutes. And like, <laughs> it, it was just because I wasn't thinking about it. Like he was asking me about the program. He's like, how's it work? So I was like, oh, right. I'll show you. And it just happened. But sometimes I open shit and I'll just like stare at it or play samples forever. And I never find something that. Uh, dude, that, I find yeah. that I find that with him all the time because I've I grew up as a. I was a fan of like punk bands and came up in that scene and everything so for me everything was literally like four instruments put a mic in the room and fucking beat shit up right and that was (laughs) it you know can you hear everything sweet (laughs) yeah right good we're good you know and um and so when it came time to like record i started to learn about all these other things like okay let's put keyboards in this put that in this because i'm a fan of you know i'm a huge fan of like things like cheap trick so yeah. i love all those harmonies and i love all those keyboards and i'm a fan of He's like layers pop guy. music and i'm i'm definitely a layers guy i love all those overdubs and stuff like that so i'm like you know the sex pistols with a, a sensibility of like oh let's put like 25 layers of guitars and keyboards on top of it and stuff like that so i've always had that but i've never been able to sit down with a, like a um, like a DAW and a system and stuff and kind of figure it out. That's sure. kind of foreign to me. It's like, give me a guitar and I can bang it out. Give me a bass and I can figure something out. Let me sing and I can do it. And so I find with him all the time working with him, it's been like, how do you do this? And he's in five minutes, he's got something that's like super fucking cool. And I'm like, how, what, how did even, what did you even do? Well, it's, it's like, just, oh man, you know I just it, do it here. You should download this and you should buy this. And I download it and buy it. And then he's like, oh no, I moved on to another thing. And I'm like, you fucking dick. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so a little, backstory, do this. little backstory with that. So I was on, I was on a, a PC and I was, I was into um, Reaper. Mm-hmm. Super like. Bare we'll edit over this, by the way. Yeah. We, we yeah. still use Reaper for our live yeah. our- backtracks and stuff yeah that's what we're yeah. using right now I'm, I'm doing them for live sessions and and kind of like tracking i'm mm-hmm. I'm using it because fucking steven slate drums doesn't work on anything else yeah. anymore <laughs> right because of the os uh upgrade oh uh, yeah <sighs> assholes anyway so uh and i'm, I'm talking about apple not not ssd no, i love not SSD. a sponsor um <laughs> apple's not a sponsor either they're never going to be a sponsor <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like, so, so I started with Reaper and it's, it's bare bones down and dirty. It does what you got to do. And, yeah. and, and I told him about it and what was awesome about it with PC is that it, you could get free plugins and free, uh, virtual instruments yeah. anywhere, like right. just downloaded, it's just like tons and tons of it. And they'll and, all work with Reaper. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I loved that. I loved that so much for the last 
two years of the 10 years that that computer worked <laughs> because somehow I had a fucking PC that worked for eight, eight or nine years. Right. Um, doing like recording and uh, like uh, video editing stuff and all sorts of shit stuff. So I was like, you know what? I, I've got a, a Mac. I, I might as well just like change over to Mac and stuff. And I was just trained on on Reaper and we started writing together and he's like so how do you do all this stuff and i told him uh, i was using addictive drums he was telling me for like uh about a year where he, he was like just download some stuff and learn how to use it please just for the sake of you and your brain yeah <laughs> just just for do your it. health right and so i finally did it and he was like oh no i'm on different stuff now right I'm because like, you because dick it, because <laughs> because it took him over a year to do it and then right. and then I was like, I want to continue to do like all sorts of fun keyboard stuff. So I went to Logic because, you know, Logic. And right now, I'm not I, a... you brought up Ableton. It's uh man, I, I had Ableton for a little while and it's just so daunting. I don't <laughs> like tracking on it. I, I used to be the same way. I, I'm actually like I was on Logic for like 10 years, but uh, I started using Ableton like two years ago. And for a while, I was the same way. I'd produce in Ableton, but then I would like record vocals and stuff in Logic. And yeah. I, fi I finally got over it, and and now I love tracking in Ableton. Um, it took me a while to get used to it, but now I don't think you could get me to go back to anything. So you okay. know what's you know what's going to happen now is like I was this close to going to Logic, and I'm going to do it. And once I do it, he's going to be like, "Oh, I switched to Ableton," and I'm going to be like, "He's fucking dick." Well, the good thing is if you're on like Logic or Ableton, I really even right. not Ableton so much, but I mean for like electronic producing, Ableton is where right. it's at. But like Logic, Pro Tools, like Cubase, if you use one of those, like it doesn't. It's all, it's yeah, legit. it all kind yeah. of works together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that, that that was that was what happened. He right. He he took a while to get to me, and then I I was using a Mac for so long that I was like, mm, maybe I should use the thing that works with Mac sure well and 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 like and like you said so again you know rivals again they brought a lot of instrument like electronic instruments into their uh their music and stuff and that inspired me to be like yeah this this stuff is cool yeah, I, I mean, so that's that. a good jumping back into the podcast uh point after we took a break which uh none of you that are listening would have known if i hadn't have brought it up just now that we took a break <laughs> so that edit point has just happened seamlessly yeah. But yeah, seamless. seamless. I try and make sure that anything that should be seamless is not. <laughs> I like to be, be like... the seam. <laughs> I like to be the seam in life. <laughs> what's uh, okay? So so tour story. What's uh? Oh man. What's what is the most? What is <laughs> oh, the man. smallest bottle you've tried to pee in on the road? Oh man. See, I I can't say that I've personally ever pissed in a bottle. No, I, on tour. Wow. Okay. Nah, really? but I I did fill in for It Lives It Breathes uh for a couple tours and all of them pissed in bottles. In fact, they <laughs> piss in bottles so frequently that they have anxiety when they're home and they have to piss in bottles when they're at home. Oh, wow. I imagine that's that a, by that's now a weird they're probably thing. Yeah, it's super weird. They'll just like be like we'll be like going to bars and stuff and they'll like go out to the van and like piss in a bottle instead of like <laughs> going to the bathroom. I'm just like, "Man, y'all are weird." We we did it. Um, I I actually when we were touring when we were doing our our like our most touring, you know, like when it was more like often. Yeah. Um, I was uh, I I basically moved into the van because I'm not from New York, so I kind of mm -hmm. lived he I, I lived in the van and I lived in our rehearsal studio, and I was like, all right, well I'm handling the business, so I'll do this and this and that that way I can kind of make these things work, and sure. I don't have to work ten jobs to pay rent. So, um, so we would go on tour, but my, but, but our, our rule for being on the road was like, you don't stop unless you need to get gas because we need to get somewhere. Right. Right. So That's like, my rule too. yeah. So, so if someone's got to pee, uh, sorry, figure it out, <laughs> like figure it out, man. Like we're not stopping until we got to get gas. Uh, if I could, I would switch drivers while moving and have, <laughs> and 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 you just make things work. 
Yeah, that's how I am too. I'm well, just listen, like, let's, go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's yeah, go. Yeah, man, you got to get there. You got to get. Yeah. There. I love touring. Don't get me wrong. I love being anything on the road. I love. I love. Uh, you know, I love a windshield in front of me. That's my favorite kind of window to look out of. Um, I I love anything about being on the road. Totally. But, Man, you got to get to the club. You got to get there. <laughs> well, my, my issue, I can I can drive for hours and hours, but because I'm home, right? I'm very relaxed. Yeah, so I, I feel that when I'm on on the road, I can drive forever. But when I'm here, I'm like, oh, I have to drive 20 minutes. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, yeah, I feel that too. It, feel. Like with takeout, with takeout with with uh, with my wife is she's like oh man you know i i really want this from this place it's like th there's a really good chinese food place like 15 minutes from here and i'm like nah that's too far doordash yeah man yeah dude <laughs> yeah but i don't want to i don't want to pay 75 dollars for a 25 dollar <laughs> come on hey man convenience if i if i have an if i have an addiction it's probably convenience bro. delivering convenience. yeah convenience i'm gonna go with that i'm addicted to convenience mm. Okay. If I have an addiction, it's definitely convenience. I can I can definitely appreciate that. So in Tulsa, what's the uh, what's the food scene like? I've heard good things. Yeah, that's that's one of the things that's holding me back from going to Tulsa. I don't know about the food stuff. It's pretty awesome, actually. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good food in Tulsa, and I'm kind of like uh, I wouldn't say I'm a picky eater by any means, but I I do like enjoy quality food, and I don't like eating like like garbage food. I feel like you know garbage like in, camel garbage jerky. Out. <laughs> yeah like fuck camel <laughs> um, but like there's honestly there's a lot of like restaurant tours here that own like multiple uh different kinds of restaurants different genres of restaurant um man there's some really good food here great barbecue here um okay so i'm all about the barbecue yeah we're, we're definitely in it for the barbecue i, I have a smoker outside like yeah. we we try and make things happen. what's what's your guys um touring uh diet like wow. what's what's your because every band's got kind of a different thing right we, like we try to do chipotle as often as possible chipotle is uh, a great one yeah we uh i worked for chipotle for like seven years and a couple of our other members worked for chipotle for a number of years and we we just kind of know it inside out and we know like right. for the money that's like even though like some bands would probably be like oh it's expensive it's like for the quality of food versus like some processed bullshit you get at Taco Bell. Like it's, Dude, it's a pretty a good freezer. bang for your buck. They don't right. have a freezer. Yeah, no, that's just a refrigerator. So. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. And everything's chopped up every day and like, it's yeah. actually fresh. So you walks know. extra, but they got the best guac. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's ugh, man. It's worth it. It's worth it. All right. So, so if you can't find a Chipotle, um, cause I've seen few Chipotles on the road. Sure. I it's see a getting lot of, better these days, but yeah, it is. It is. I've seen a lot of Waffle Houses, which I yeah. love. I love. I love a good Waffle House. That's a good like yeah, three a.m. I love a good Waffle House, but yeah. man, I've got some stories about Waffle House, dude. There's some bad ones. There's some bad there's ones. Bad. Not there's not as many bad as uh, bad IHOP stories, but That's definitely for bad sure. ones. Dude. You know what though? I hop oh, I, I hop at <laughs> least Fuck I hop indeed. I'm with you. At least has some <laughs> boysenberry syrup. Yeah, at least. <laughs> yeah. As if it's real. Uh, it's not boysenberry it's just, syrup. It's, it's not real just crazy. I, I don't know. Like it's like it, even if you're lucky and the service is good at an IHOP, the food is never like it's always just like tolerable no. at best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like day old Denny's. Yeah. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Waffle House is pretty gross too, but like I appreciate that they own their grossness. <laughs> at least, they at least I can watch them cook it. And they throw <laughs> hash browns on it. Yeah, dude. I own I, I appreciate that. And they have biscuits and gravy, which I can I can always get down. Biscuits on. and gravy are, are that's our jam, by the way. I'm with it. But yeah, when we like I know when we're on tour, it's like um other than stopping and getting a place, which we will look for a Chipotle. That's one of the sure. that's one of the top spots. Uh, Waffle House is another one. Um, our guitar player, for some reason, man, he absolutely loves sheets. Wawa he is loves way sheets. better than sheets. Fuck, he sheets. loves sheets. I'm gonna go man. on the record here. I don't even say fuck sheets. <laughs> Wawa, all the I way. feel like they're the same shit. Yeah, I mean, if I have to eat one of them, um, I would probably prefer Wawa. 
Um, right. But I'm I'm like toured enough now where I'm just like I'm completely over the whole sheets of Wawa thing. Like back in the day, like we we would be, see our first sheets on tour and we'd be like, fuck yeah, shit. Right, right. So we'd, be, we'd be all stoked and then we'd hit a fucking uh uh we hit the other one like the same day or like the next day and we'd <laughs> like and but by the say like you know we'd be stoked when we get on the tour but by the end of the tour we're just like oh let's not stop there <laughs> what is it what is it really you can order well, a fast food shitty meal on a screen right that's it no well you know what like oh it's, it's a touch button wawa cool. wawa first off they have great coffee he's okay. not a, he's not a hot coffee guy i'm, not like, a hot I'm coffee all guy. about like coffee coffee they've got good they've got good coffee like if you're out on the road and you need some coffee wawa over everything are you a coffee guy I am, but uh, really acidic coffee like tends to like bother me. Me too. Um, I'm a, I'm a cold brew person because of that. I typically drink like nitro cold brew or cold yep. brew, but yeah, I yeah. I do like like good drip coffee, but it's got to be like a pour over or like a like a fucking bougie coffee shop or something because oh, gas station. You're precious. Coffee. Look at you. I you're am, precious. But <laughs> the, the it's just the the acidity just fucks me up, and I and I, I do I, I, I feel get you all day. Yeah, hundred percent. I get it. I get it. Uh, I'm not that. I'm not as precious as you guys. Yeah. But, I can't. But I can't I, eat a lot on the road. I I'm I'm yeah. like a I'm like a fucking bag of almonds guy. Yeah. <laughs> and like well, a, my and like a Quest Bar guy. My issue is I, I can't so do good. it. I can. Eat, I I like when I'm on the road. When we're on the road. I'm like a one meal a day person. Um, and nine times out of ten, it's whatever the bar is giving me, which sucks because it's worse. Because I'm also a singer, so it's like we get to the bar and they're like, "We got pizza for you," and I'm like, Jeez, "Great, great. <laughs> cool. <laughs> that'll yeah. be that'll be awful." <laughs> My problem is that is that uh, especially when I started screaming, is I can't eat like eight hours before a show. Yeah, I feel that. Right. Yeah, uh, because I, if I'm anxious. Yeah, I I actually. I, I, I was because, you know, at the time I was a very active singer when this particular incident happened and I I wasn't drinking because I was I was underage and like not drinking because I was not allowed to. That's why at the bar at the at the bar. I couldn't. Well, you know why? Because your fucking singer, Phil, he wouldn't serve me. That's why. Okay. But at any rate, I wasn't my singer at the time, so I can't you can't blame me for this. No, no, no. I'm going to blame you. I'm gonna blame you. So uh, yeah, I climbed up on a uh, on just a the, a kick drum, and I came back down, and it just jumbled everything in my stomach, and I puked on the drum kit oh, no. while oh. we were playing. Oh. AJ AJ was there. AJ was playing the drums at that time. My my current drummer right now. This is like like is this your worst? Ago. Is this your Did worst you on stage experience? Yeah, yeah. Could you imagine if this happened too? today? No, everybody yes. would just like evacuate the building. I can imagine oh my God. what happens to him today. I can't. I hope it does. I can't. Wait. It was. It was oh all out my nose. Oh no. So so now now anytime we play a show together, he's gonna be like, "Hey, you want something?" Yeah, I always do. Uh, do you do you have any? What's your worst? Uh, what's your worst on stage experience? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. I have twice broken an ankle on stage. Oh and not, man! And not known that it had happened. I mean, like right. it hurt really bad, but I wasn't like I had so much adrenaline going that I was like, oh, yeah. I just like stretched it or sprained it. Were you, were you it. singing or playing? What did bass? you I'm playing bass? And I was like, we we're jumping, doing like synchronized jumps and stupid right, yeah. shit. Like, oh man, yeah, I just remember it being broken and like I had like a moment where I was just like. You know, like just kind of like gathering myself, and then I got back up, and and I and I kept playing, but I just remember like I kept, boom, 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 <laughs> boom, and I kind of like shifted to my right ankle and like took right. some of the, the bombardment off, but you became yeah, a pogo. I, yeah, I fucked myself up like tw- twice. I've done that, and um, I can't think of anything worse that's happened. Like, there's definitely been like that's some pretty hurt, awful, crazy, no, and. <laughs> crazy embarrassing like technical things that have happened or um you know we've had like we've been in the middle of venues where it's been like 100 degrees and our laptop is just like (laughs) glitching on us and And we're just like i remember one time we were playing in iowa and our laptop kept overheating and like we tried playing a song four times 
and we would oh, get wow. we would get like and the crowd was into it like we were just like yo we're, like we don't know what's going on our computer is fucking up people and, are very forgiving yeah but we were really up front with them we're like yeah we're gonna try this again and and like we, after two times we we're like oh fuck this but the crowd was like no try it again <laughs> and we, and we tried it two more times and it was just like oh i was just like so just devastated and we get off stage and of course everybody's like you guys are awesome we love right, it right. and we're just like oh my god i hate myself i just want to die well, it's now. it's funny man because people uh, people appreciate real shit yeah you know what i mean so like i i one of the main reasons honestly that i have um in in whatever bands i've been in have always kind of been anti tracks and things like that i'm all for them on our records sure um, i'm like yeah put everything on the record but i've always been hesitant to do anything like that live is because i was like i never want to be in a situation where if if a laptop goes down we can't play sure you know i want to make sure that no matter what we can you know or or if if we have a song that's dependent on tracks i want to have a option version b an that we can method. do as yeah. a four-piece band you know, yeah, that's, um, that's weird. how have you like how have you guys found that like has that how, as far as like how many times has that been an issue ha, is that an issue what's um, your plan b do you have like your ways we, around set up and ready to go sure um we've had a couple instances where like the drummer gets off or the track gets off or something happens and uh typically our, our guitar player cj that like does all of our tracks and stuff mm -hmm. he's he's usually the first one to notice that something is off like in the monitors and we'll like say we're playing in a, like a a verse or something and it's got like some synth pad or something that's just right. like whole whole notes or half notes or something and he hears that like the wrong note is hitting like you know like or beat off or half beat off or some shit right. like that um he'll stop the track <laughs> and we'll keep playing because we know to keep playing but like they'll inevitably be like a big track part that comes back in you know like that's kind of how our, our music has empirically worked and yeah um man he'll just play fucking dj press play and <laughs> he'll have it he'll have it lined up on the grid and he'll just like you'll see him he'll he'll like he'll be all like still and we're weak and 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 like the you know maybe there'll be like a quarter second delay or something but right like, right it, yeah. it comes back in and um we've had a couple times where we've just had to kind of like uh, play through shit that we norm like we play like whole chords and stuff instead of like the piano yeah. that would be in a place or um you know um we had one time we were in japan and we had my laptop and in, in my backpack and we were all crammed in this little van and we had all our bags like pushed to the sides and stuff and we get to the venue and our drummer opens the the back door and my backpack just fell to the ground and my oh no never came back on again oh and uh we were all like fuck <laughs> <laughs> like we're in japan what the fuck right yeah like how do we what happens uh, so they, they took us to the apple store and of course they couldn't help us on short notice and um because they're geniuses <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, there's probably a little bit of a language barrier too <laughs> yeah uh, but uh anyway um you know our our drummer nick he uh, at the time he he had like his computer that he brought with him and we found the dropbox folder that had our our tracks and we wow. downloaded the drivers for an inter interface and we were able to like just switch gears and use a PC for the rest of the tour. But wow, uh, just kind of gone with it. You know, we've just accepted early on in our, in our sounds that it was a very integral part of our, our live, you know, performance. That's cool, and man. It's cool. It's such a scary thing for, again, like just for someone like me, it's like such a scary thing to look at, but on the, on the uh, listener side of it, Man, it's so awesome. It's it so awesome. Impactful. You know, it's it's really um it changes music. It yeah. really does. And it and it and it can make you feel something when you hear it. It can completely change the dynamic of a song. And I'm super into dynamics. Um, but man, it's such a terrifying thing <laughs> for me. 
it is to, like to you know, hear it, that it's funny to it's, hear that but like to hear that you like you you, you did it is awesome um, oh, yeah. i'm gonna let him do his thing and i have another question for you about a language barrier type thing in a second sure. that's totally off the path but i'm gonna let yeah him. so so like my drummer um he and i we had a lengthy break between being in bands together and mm -hmm. when when i started writing the record or the, the the singles that we wound up putting out um for the past couple of years um number one was can you play to a click and he was like well it doesn't matter i said no it does matter yes it yeah. does it, it absolutely cool. matters because <laughs> i'm putting electronic stuff to it so you're gonna play to a click and um that's the one thing i've always been and and like he was saying like to to his point is it's something i'm always super conscious of it's like fuck like you need to like get on your shit man because because as i got into it into more of the you know adding electronics and stuff to it mm -hmm. yeah that that whole di dichotomy where where you're just like okay well that's it yeah that's it you've ruined the song you have effectively <laughs> ruined the song I'm, I'm so into it and i so am inspired by it and i want to add it to my I music i just in think such I, a bad way and i love listening to it and every band that does it like i'm just like fuck that's so cool and then when it comes to me doing it i'm just like i, I think know. it just comes down to <laughs> it's it, it comes down to having a plan b where where you know like sometimes you do need to like i know a lot of the newer stuff will definitely be harder to do without those backing tracks and and, and things of that nature but like i feel like there we do have rehearsals where we don't play it like right. we don't have sure that stuff going on and and you're like okay well i don't feel like setting up the laptop oh well i we do uh we go simple we do a um a tablet Mm -hmm. and and you just pop the track in go for it or if you have you know an interlude between songs you just boop yeah and you're good um so yeah we we do have those where i just get lazy and i'm like i'm not setting this shit up for you because my drummer can't my my drummer can't set it up he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing right and he's like oh i'm like well fine we're just gonna play it yeah so yeah i mean sometimes and sometimes it's even better when you just kind of do like because i do that all the time in one <laughs> of our songs we just have this break it. where where it's just like a like a arpeggiated synth and i just kind of sing it yeah and yeah. and if that's plan b <laughs> plan b is, get some laughs plan b yeah. is you vocally going that's your plan b that should be like plan d you should have like at least two in between like how it's supposed to be and that there should be two <laughs> other things oh well i'm just saying work on that yeah i'll work on it <laughs> well we'll work on it we'll work on it and we'll get back to you <laughs> so i uh, i wanted to ask you and, and like we're we're totally over our normal time here and i appreciate you okay. hanging out with us for yeah. so long i really do um but because you were talking about being in japan and there being a language barrier i i have um one thing i wanted to ask you because i experienced it um two fun things my band toured china and so we had like oh, a, yeah. a, a similar thing and uh and it was one thing where one of our people that was with us that was our translators and kind of our guide throughout china um i i had asked him to give me a few phrases to say to crowds yeah and the one he gave me was uh well anima and so every night I was like, well, anima. And he told me that it means like, we love you guys. And I was like, oh, that's fucking perfect. That's exactly what I want to say. Yeah. You know, like I was like, thank you. Well, anima. <laughs> and every time I did it, they just kind of like got quieter and just looked at me. Oh, and I was like, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> What's happening here? And so uh, it was like the third uh, show that I said it and I didn't get a response and I kind of looked to my left and I saw him and he was laughing his ass off on the side of the stage. And I was like, son of a bitch. God damn it. Like I should have known, I should have known this was going to happen. And so after the show, I went and asked him and I was like, what am I saying? What am I saying to people every night? What do you have me saying to people? And he was like, well, anima, it means I love your mom. Oh my God. <laughs> and so, so at the mm. end of every show, or multiple times throughout the show, I was like, I love your mom. Fuck yeah. I love right? that. 
So that was one of the things. So I'm wondering if you had anybody mess with you guys in that way. And then um, the other way of having that language barrier type thing was well, like, because you said you had to have something done. We had like the very first show that we went to, uh, we had set it up to where we went there. We didn't bring, like we brought guitars with us. We brought pedal boards yeah. with us. And that's it. Our yeah. drummer brought his snare and pedals, and that was it. Everything else was set up. And the very first show we went to, there's no cymbals. Oh, shit. <laughs> and we're like, um, we need somebody yeah, <laughs> to, uh, to get cymbals for this show because we don't have any. Yeah. And so we were trying to like talk to somebody about like cymbals, and we're trying to like be like, okay, we in an hour. We need symbols. <laughs> we need symbols for. We play in an hour. We need this happen now, um, and and that was a big language barrier thing because for some reason, like we couldn't figure out how to communicate symbols. So what's uh, if there was anything while you guys were there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like these these ones, <laughs> <laughs> or just being like. <laughs> Did you did you have anything where anybody messed with you because uh, of that? And what was your if it wasn't the Apple Store thing? Was there any kind of weird like how do we communicate this because we need it to get done? Huh. Um. Fuck. I'm trying to think. I I can't really recall any anybody really messing with us. Oh, you're um, so lucky. <laughs> we we had like a tour manager kind of guy too, but his English wasn't like great. It was better than our Japanese, <laughs> right? But right. like, he, he could only speak English marginally better than we could speak Japanese. <laughs> so like, um, I don't know. Japan was just really cool because all of the people are so friendly that like, even if you don't understand anything, they're just like, <laughs> like they're just oh, super dude. smiley and happy. And you yep. can say, Konnichiwa. China was the, China yeah. was the same way. You can say hi to anybody on the side of the road and they'll stop and say hi to you even if they don't know you like they don't just assume that you're like gonna like murder them or not. like you know like uh it, it's it was pretty wild um and what was the second question i'm sorry uh well no i was wondering if anybody messed with you and then on the other hand was there anything that was like like you the experience you had with the apple store where it was like oh, you yeah. needed to communicate with somebody but you couldn't like, there was just something that was like, how do we get this across? Man, I'm sure there were like little things every day. Yeah. Uh, and of course, like some of our guys are like, want to be comedians and you know, they're oh. just like asking questions all day. Musicians. Like, of course we are. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, but I can't recall like the, the Apple store thing was probably the most like nice trialing and tribulating thing that we had to deal with. I'll, I'll tell you, I may, I may want to be a comedian, and uh, every single bathroom that I walked into, uh, knowing full well that every other country except America, most people know multiple languages. Right. Like, we're lazy as shit, and we know, like, one, and we're like, speak Amer American. You yeah. know, it's like, that's not a language. Um, but so every every bathroom I went into, I said two things. Every single bathroom. I walked in and I said, hey, anybody need a hand? <laughs> and and anybody I was next to, I said, sweet dick, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it was different times. <laughs> Every single time. And uh, I mean, my band, like we're, we're fluent in sweet dick, bro. We do that everywhere we go. Oh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I did it knowing full well that like they knew full well what I was saying <laughs> and all, they could just look at me and be like, what an asshole. Oh, uh, I don't know why, but that just but reminded me last. <laughs> of this, this time we were, we we're playing in uh, Amsterdam and we were just like driving to Amsterdam. So we're just right. like gas station in the middle of nowhere on the highway. And like everybody goes into the gas station to use the bathroom, and that was their first experience having to pay to use the restroom. Yes. So like we're all outside of the van, and we're like talking about like what the fuck? Like we have to pay to use the restroom? Like what a bunch of shit? Like that's bullshit. <laughs> and we like look next to us, 
and there's this guy in like a sprinter van like in the front seat and we're just like oh there's a guy there and we just like keep talking and we're just like that guy is still there um <laughs> and we kind of like look, look and get like a closer look at him and we realize that he's not wearing a shirt and we're like it's kind of weird it's really cold outside <laughs> um and uh we're <laughs> I'll just wrap the story short. The the dude was naked and he was like That's amazing. jerking off in the front seat of the van, like looking at us and to you guys. Yeah, so so we <laughs> we, we got back to the van and we left very quickly. So wow. So but also, I mean, compliment, clearly. Right. Yeah. Right. Maybe. Right. I don't know, maybe. Right? Like, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> like that's kind no of... matter how you feel about it, that's a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody was like, these guys, <laughs> this is my day. Go out right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's amazing. I think it's amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I, I encourage, I'm... I encourage you, uh, next time you're in a restroom with your band members. Yeah. Just... Um, three words that, that just never f- feel or sound right together, but also sound so right. Sweet dick, bro. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. It it's throws a great way everyone to make off. People feel uncomfortable. <laughs> it throws about everyone off. Anybody. Yeah, I can see that. It's, I I used it fantastic. as a groomsman in a uh, in a, a wedding before. Yeah. If I have a band member at a urinal, I'll go up and whisper it in his ear. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Every oh time. He's he's told me that before. He's also punched me in the stomach after telling me, "No, no, no, we need to take this last shot of Jameson." Yeah. Sometimes, so, sometimes you need that extra. I'm an punch. asshole. <laughs> any, any, uh, like as I took the shot, he just. But then, then he was like, "Sweet dick, bro," and I was like, "Well, thanks." Makes everything better. Thanks. <laughs> cool. It is a compliment. No matter oh, what would you say if you you just walk up to someone random in the bathroom and you're like, "Sweet dick, bro," and they're like, "Thanks." You yeah. say you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> a- anytime, man. <laughs> you go. You got it. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> You have a good one. <laughs> you, just, you know, and you know what? You you walk away feeling good about yourself because you're like, what a nice guy. <laughs> you just made somebody's day. You know what we need to do right now? Yes, we need to do. We're we're like over an hour, so it I doesn't like, matter. It doesn't but, feel like it is. We could talk to you forever, and I don't know how long you want to stay on, but like, but we this could turn this. into two episodes. But we do need to. Uh, we do need to you feed sponsors. our sponsor. <laughs> Let's do it. So. Uh, we have a sponsor. Uh, they are Poddex, poddex.com. And what they are is they're a company that puts out kind of like a, a deck of cards. And those deck of cards have a number of things on them like uh, podcast um, like questions that you can do to interviews. You can do topics to talk about. You can do a topic for the whole episode. Yeah, for, for, people, for any of you that are like so new. For people who don't have verbal diarrhea like us, yeah, it's great for you. It's that's excellent. excellent. That's really cool. It is really cool. Like if you've it's, ever played uh, the game Cards Against Humanity. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's okay. kind of exactly it's what it kind of like that, which is awesome. And if you Very go to cool. poddex.com, it's actually like I, I got a couple decks um, and they were delivered to me when I was heading home for the holidays and I was hanging out with my family and stuff. And I just kind of took them out and we just asked each other the questions just because it was fun. Just yeah. it was like a fun thing. Um so it's it's not just for podcasters. It's like a cool thing to do anyway. If you are interested in any of that at all, anybody that's listening, if you go to poddex.com and you want to get a set of them, uh, you can put in the promo code BACON. Because everything is better th- with bacon. Yeah, and you get 10% off your order. So right now, we're going to do the Poddex question of the evening. So Skaggs, we, we've, got, we've got five different decks here. We've got the interview deck edition two we've got the i'm gonna pour uh, whiskey well would you good. rather deck we've got the interview deck one we're gonna skip over the episode deck because we in, in case we need a reason to have a podcast yeah we we're to, like in an episode so yeah. we're good yeah so uh and then we have the what the heck deck so which can sir, be anything which deck well, would you I'm, like to or I'm what's your favorite what color Obviously, what the heck deck? What the heck deck, man? Okay. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to grab this what the heck deck. 
Uh, what I'm going to do right now is because it's a long running joke on the show is I'm going to hand this to Jim so he can try and I can't uh, shuffle. He can shuffle. I can't shuffle. He I, lived in Vegas and he I lived can't in shuffle. Vegas. I lived in Vegas for a year. I did too. I, did you really? For oh, nice. Only a year. Night. When me too. When did you live there? <laughs> uh, 2019. I got 2018 to 2019. Okay. All right. I was there in 2000. Maybe 15. Nice. Nice. Something like that. Yeah. 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 We uh, we went there though in yeah, what yeah. 2019. I um I worked at Caesar's Palace I... as a uh, as a bartender. And I'm not cannot, a shuffler. I cannot shuffle at all. Um, while you were there, how did you pretending. get good at shuffling? See, no. Real quick, you see how he's pretending he's going to shuffle? Sound yeah, pretending? I like it. That was solid. That was not solid. That was for that was all, better than all, for all, all our ASMR people. Oh, man. Our ASMR that was actually right better there. than ASMR. that was better than any of the other shuffles you've done. Well, you that know what? I'm, I'm better than better. the one you showed Mark Marrow. I'm I'm going to actually uh, get good at shuffling. That's one of my goals in the next six months. Uh, I'm going to do online courses and learn how to I'm do it. Like, and I'm going to learn like that. I'm going to be like, and I'm not going to I'm not going to let you know either. And just one day I'm going to come in here and you're gonna be like, Jim sucks at shuffling. I'm going to be like, ah, I do. And I'm going to do like the magician shuffle. I love it. Thanks for the heads up. But I barely yeah. shuffled, and there you go. I've just Shuffle. bent all the cards terribly. Oh, like usually, usually he just like pushes them together, like just like yeah. wads like, them up. I, I, dude, I crow magnon just shove them together. They're they're two solid bars of soap to me. I just put them on the other side yeah. of each other. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shuffle this one more time, and then Skags, I'm gonna come up to the camera. I'm going to run my finger across the cards, and then you're going to decide which card. Uh, what What did you do as a job when you lived in Vegas? In Vegas, uh, I yeah. was in a DJ group, and uh, nice. I played, I played shows in a DJ group, dude. That's awesome. That's awesome. I like the punk scene in Vegas. I really do. Yeah, it's pretty cool. What's the name of that, that venue that we didn't go to? The venue we didn't go to. Yeah. <laughs> there were a number we didn't go to. No, well, I mean like the good ones. Um, I'll think about it. You you okay. do this. All right, all right, ready? So, you tell me when to stop, bud. Stop. Ooh. That's it. There we go. That's the one. That's the one. Out of the what the heck deck? What Guinness World Record do you think you could break in the future? Oh man, um, there's probably a couple, honestly. Oh well, share them. Uh, all share right, them. well, give us give us two then. Um, I could probably outbalance anyone on a on a balance board. Oh really? Yeah, Are you I, balance. Is that how you work out? Is that a workout thing? No, I've just had one for like many years, and it's just kind of been like a little pastime I do every once in a while. I kind of get in and out of it sometimes but nice. uh, it's one of those things that i could pretty much do it as long as like my attention span is um so like uh sometimes i usually just get bored and, and stop writing it but like I, so what's I, your what's the balance board on is it one of the ones with like the um like the ball underneath or is it one of the ones with the small cylinder things underneath it's a cylinder nice i have one with the ball underneath i i haven't graduated to the cylinder yet but i try and do i try and do like 10 minutes yeah. on it and I'll try and like read through my like I'll go through Twitter and I'll go through like the news and stuff like that and try and do 10 minutes a day trying to do that. But that's awesome, man. That's that's <laughs> were you a skater or anything like that? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, okay. I'm more of a bicycle rider. I did a lot of racing and stuff when I was a kid. Did you? Nice. nice. I did BMX yeah. actually. Oh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Did you do uh, you do ramps and stuff? Like yeah, I did. Well, I did like a BMX racing, like a, I did ABA stuff for a while. And, oh, dude, uh, that's excellent. And then I, I did like a little bit of riding on on parks and stuff. But I was more like dirt riding, not not like ramp riding. Dude, that's so cool. I I did. Um, I never did any races, and I never did any like like track riding or anything like that. But I I would go to um I would go to places and do like half pipes and stuff. Yeah, with totally. uh, I had friends that were skaters, and I was just better on a bike. It was me and like one other guy that were better on a bike, and so we would just learn tricks and do stuff on a half pipe. Oh yeah, but that's that's awesome, dude. That's fucking that's great. 
CJ, our guitar player, he likes to get on a, a BMX bike every once in a while and do tricks. He's he was used to be really into it. He was into like Adam No Jumper like long before he was doing hip hop stuff. Right. Nice. Are you are you still are you still good on a on a bike if you get on a bike? Because I yeah, am not. I'm I'm not competitive anymore. <laughs> um, but I ride with my dad a lot. Like we have mountain bikes and we'll go ride. And um, I was gonna say that would be my other Guinness book thing is I, I think I could out I could ride no handed on a bike on for any strength of straight uh straight wind distance. winding and everything all right well i mean san, I, I okay san ride. francisco so that here, was, here's that complicated things hills makes it harder i mean i can ride up and down yes. hills, but when it's like you know like that yeah, that's, yeah. That's when it's story. winding and downhill that's awesome man that's okay great. so so one thing that i will say if you decide to go for any because obviously this has got your brain racking if you decide to do any of this eventually you, you got to hit us up no oh, for sure and 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 we'll we'll get we'll go there i'll i'll ride with you we'll I'll ride cover with you it. Until we'll I cover can, it man i'll ride with you until i can't fuck yeah hell I'll, yeah man That's i'll great. hold the camera until you get really really small really <laughs> really small I'll last time right i <laughs> last time i was on a on a on a bike to do tricks i hurt myself <laughs> and i think now i would hurt myself worse but yeah. I do, I do like to get on on a uh, on a mountain bike and go through some trails every now and then. Yeah, every I do enjoy that. I'm not as reckless as I used to be. Um, oh, <laughs> I hurt myself a few times too, and now I'm older and I don't want to break bones. So, you know. well, you, yeah, you you hurt yourself playing. You broke your ankle playing bass. So yeah, I can only <laughs> yeah, imagine. Right. I the, still have some weird bone in my wrist that pops out. I don't know what the hell that's I, from. I that's, that's from that a wipeout uh, on a BMX that happened the night of a show and I played the show anyway, cause I didn't want to go to the hospital. So right, right. I just let it I heal. <laughs> yeah. I just let it heal. It still hurts when I touch it. And this is 20 years later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, you know what, man, anytime I'm around, I will ride with you wherever, yeah. man. If oh, we're yeah. in the same, if we're in the same city and the same state at any time, I ride. will ride with you. <laughs> I'll hold the camera, <laughs> and, and then It'd I'll drink with anyway. you guys I after. Just like to do it. And then I'll buy drinks afterwards. He'll buy <laughs> drinks afterwards for him, not you. He's dick. a guest. You're nobody. Dick. <laughs> what a dick. You and I are like one person, which means that when I buy him drinks, you buy half of them. Man, really? that checks out. Yeah. Right. That sounds. You know, he agreed. That's two out of three. I hate that. Yeah. Well, I know you hate it, but it's uh, it's it's law. I'm math. looking at that math. That math is awful. It's all right. Common Core, man. <laughs> oh fuck, Common Core. We all know that. Anyway, yes. So, so we are we are way <laughs> past the time. <laughs> the time we don't have the time. But this is this is a, a long episode. This is a marathon episode for We're our listeners. And you know what? That's fucking awesome because that means that we got along with our guests. Yeah, it means we had a good time. Did you have a good time? I did. I appreciate you guys having me on. Cool. Awesome. We appreciate you coming on. We really do. And um, we want you to come on again. I yeah, like absolutely, man. Uh, honestly, I'll, I'll hit you like, up. Just from your first email that I got from you guys, it was just like, I could tell you guys are super excited about what you're doing, and I just want to be a part of it. So I'm, I'm stoked to be yeah, here. Man. Hey, we're all, we're all trying to just make, uh, we're trying to entertain some people. We're trying to yeah. entertain ourselves, and through that, we're trying to entertain more people. And we're doing that as podcasters now, which is a new thing for us. And but as musicians, for as all musicians, of us, like, as songwriters, you know, people, as everything. people, people want to get into like the head of a songwriter and and like somebody in a band and yeah. stuff like that. And we try and kind of give that to some of our audience because that's that's kind of what yeah. they want. And you guys have and, that context that a lot of people that aren't musicians like don't have. You know, you ask different questions and somebody that like you know that has never written a song before you know right right and 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 again like you know we hope like so. not to not to bring it not to bring it back to like the beginning but like the fact that you were like you started out as a keyboard player and they were they were like okay we're gonna change you over to bass player and now now here you are you're a front man and that's that's cool as shit to me because i was deathly afraid of a microphone Sure, dude. Me and too. Me too. Like, yeah, me right? too. And like <laughs> all of us were deathly afraid of microphones. And now I'm sure anybody who knows any of us, 
everybody's we'll like, say that's we, can't, probably we can't our, figure out how to shut them up. People yeah. know us as that now, which is yeah. funny to me. Still, people knowing me as a singer is funny to me. Yeah. Because I'm it's like, oh, so man, I'm a, I'm a guitar connect. player and a songwriter. You know, It's like, so much easier to connect with people, though, when it's your voice that, you know, like there's it people really that is. Kind of appreciate musicality and, and the arrangement and stuff. But those people are typically musicians or people that just like appreciate music. You know, there's a lot of people that don't consume music in a way where if there isn't a voice to it that they they can relate to they just kind of lost you know and yeah uh, yeah man it's a really intimate way to connect with people so i, I definitely get that i mean I, I, i've been playing music for 10 years and i'm kind of i feel like i mean i'm i am nobody but like i'm more well known now since i've been doing vocals for this band than i was the nine years that i wasn't you know well uh something that i do want you to do is is hit this guy up and be like yo this is how you scream bro <laughs> uh, yeah. because i've been any, i'll take i've been pointers, i've been man. doing it i've been doing it for what what are we on like like 12 years right and he's still like no i'm not gonna scream i'll, I'll give you a 30 second tutorial right now it's so right. it's so easy and, and right. people just overthink it like everything else but let's do it let's do so it when you're just like uh, 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 that like uh, uh, that coordination in your voice like that right. rattly uh, and I go, ah, that's it. Go, that's, ah. that's it. So it's that, ah, that way you're that, that's the coordination. You're just, you're talking through it. So instead of being like, ah, 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 you're, ah, ah, you know, you put that breath behind it, your diaphragm. A lot of people, right. they try to scream from their throat and they're just like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it, it comes from your, your stomach. You just have to have that, ah, ah coordination in in your throat and and once you have that where you're not doing so much like ah like groaniness to it right, it's right. more like isolating that like saturated like ah sound and once once you have that it's it's really a counterintuitive thing you're just you're literally just yelling while holding that coordination together not like yelling like yelling at the top of your lungs but like yelling like um, like when you're belting, when you're singing, you know, like that right, kind of right. intensity, but it's, it's just less on a note and more on that coordination. You've just done something that I haven't been done, been able to do in like 15 years. <laughs> well, I struggled for fucking ever, dude. Like, I, I mean, I've only recently. Like I, I, I wish I could have explained it. Explain well, you know, what's, like that. you know, what's funny is that like, as a, I, I teach music also. So I teach vocals and I teach guitar. And I teach it to kids and stuff. And I have I have a number of kids that want to learn how to sing aggressively. And um, I know how to sort of explain it. And I know how to walk them through how it feels. Sure. But I don't know how to translate how it feels to my actual singing. Oh, I can, I can do it. I can, I can do, do it in a warm up. I can do it in a warm up. Sure. I can I can I can get myself there. But it's like when I'm actually singing a song. If for some reason there's this there's this block there, I can do so many other things. Sure. I've I've unlocked a lot of my voice and I can do a lot with it. For me, anyway, like as as far as like I'm concerned, I can do a lot with yeah. it. I'm not trying to be like no, I, I, I feel you. But um, but as far as that aspect of it, it's kind of like when it's there, it's there. When it's not there, it's not there. And I haven't been able to connect the okay, this is my warm up, my, oh, like, I haven't been able to connect that to my singing. Sure. So how did you go about doing that? Uh, like, cause it, you, you sing clearly. Um, I've heard, uh, you know, I hear your clean voice mm -hmm. and it's very good. Your pitch right. control is great. You've got a lot of like, you've, you've definitely got some diaphragm compression there that's happening as like, as a vocal te like teacher and studier of voices. I hear that. Mm -hmm. And I hear you have a lot of a, a lot of like really good control with your compression and your air, right? You. But how do you translate that to that distorted sound and that distorted feel when you're singing versus just doing something like a ah, and doing it in like a warm up or something like that? Um, well, it's two part. Um, the first was realizing that like everything else, it's counterintuitive it sounds really intense and 
you know, if you're in the studio and you want to put it all out there, like you can put it all out there. But like realistically, when you're on stage, you cannot yell at the top of your lungs for an right. entire set. Like it's just it's really, really hard and it fucks up your voice. And that you have to find this happy medium where you can pull off the tone that you're trying to achieve screaming wise, but also not like blow your stack. And because if I if I scream too hard, I'll lose my resonance when I'm mm -hmm. singing and I can't Absolutely. feel the note that I'm singing, which fucks me up bad. Well, yeah, uh, your pitch is gone then. Yeah. And then I, then I have to do things like sing things an octave higher than I should so I can just hear it. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a recipe for disaster and getting too like tied which up. For all you vocal students out there, or people that are singing, it's an interesting thing because you're relying on your ears a lot. Right? Yeah. And then once you stop relying on your ears, you're relying on feeling yeah. Yeah. and that Muscle feeling memory. you're relying on is relying on knowing the difference between half steps and whole steps. Exactly. And you're just yeah. kind of working it up. Um, but when you add compression or you add distortion or you add these other things, it adds another feeling. Mm -hmm. And if you do it in the wrong way, it eliminates your other feeling. <laughs> right. <you> have. Right. <laughs> So right. what I've kind of learned to do is all of my, the way that I project all of my screaming is the same way that I like you would do like singing. Like I do like the the pencil like push yeah. back pencil thing and right. my high notes are twelve o'clock, my mids are three o'clock, yep. my lows are six o'clock or maybe even seven if I'm like. Did you do the did you do Melissa Cross stuff? I did, yeah, I did. Um, I, I yeah. the pencil thing, man. I took so I took pencil a couple thing is, is is key. I took yeah. a couple. <laughs> it really is because like that's what takes you out of singing back yeah. here in your throat and puts you projecting in front of yourself, um, which doesn't take as much effort because when you're singing here, you're trying to get the projection by physically pushing hard enough to project, and right, that, that's really hard and it hurts and it's not good, especially like over a long period of time. But yeah. The second, um, I guess, thing that really helped me click was I heard somebody explain um, aggressive vocal styling as the your bridge, like in your, you know, when you're uh, that that right uh, that that in there, like your bridge is where your screaming tone comes from. So if you're if you're the fact that you're a great singer or that you have experience singing and songwriting could actually aid you in being able to scream because you fundamentally understand where your bridge is. So if you mm -hmm. like now that I'm telling you that if you just kind of like fuck around when you're practicing and stuff and just kind of like uh, you find that comfortable spot and then you just start instead of going like oh, oh or like yelling or something you can right. kind of uh, 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 uh. it's just like it's it takes less energy it takes less projecting and, and it's just like you know you have a, a natural range to your voice so like your your screaming voice falls in line with that wherever the bridge would be in your um in your singing voice be it made that like when you're screaming it's not necessarily like a note but like i said like i'm doing the, the pencil thing so like the muscle memory right. is the so same for some placement it's, it's all exactly. placement so it's literally just like the coordination with your with your your uh, the bridge that makes um, it different than singing and that making that connection open the door for like all sorts of like kind of like butt rocky like ten like the yeah like kind of kind of like I that. love that joke. the I fact that the <laughs> fact that you said that hold on hold on that let's we pause just, for a moment we just started another episode because <laughs> because this guy. Is the king of butt rock? Well, no, no. What? I'm the king of butt rock. No, no you're not. No, no, he's not the king of. Butt. Why would you say that? But, but I like I. But he he is champion butt rock. I know it is douche time. rock. I he knows that. it is douche rock. Yeah. yeah. But I'm the king of douche rock. I know. I know what you're gonna throw out there. I know what you're gonna throw out there. I'm not throwing anything out. I'm no, just, no, no. Go I'm, ahead and throw I'm, it out there. I'm hurt. <laughs> I'm I'm surprised. And I'm uh, shocked. He, he knows butt rock. And I'm and I'm hurt. <laughs> he knows douche rock. I know douche rock. Yeah, I didn't know I was he the knows. king of it or the champion of it. No, no, no. You know what? For for one Halloween, he was actually a douche rock guy. Oh yeah, no Halloween, absolutely. Yeah, he, Halloween, he was full the on man. douche rock guy. You got to commit. Um, <laughs> but th mainly because I I covered my Breaking Benjamin tattoo. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm douche rock. You have a Breaking Benjamin tattoo. I'm working on I'm working on I don't have a nickelback tattoo. 
You I don't have were a Nickelback fan. That I, night. No, I was not. And I do not have. Look Super at this awesome. photograph as a as a tramp stamp. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. yeah. Well, you have a Breaking Benjamin tattoo. I'm, I, I've been working on getting that covered, but the last tattoo <laughs> artist still there. <laughs> the, the, the last tattoo artist that looked at it went, oh, why would you want to cover this up? <laughs> no, no, he, he definitely didn't say that. He was just like, that's super bad placement. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I get it. That's why I asked now, you. Now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put it out there that like Mike is calling me the, the king of butt rock, yet Mike has a Brink and Benjamin tattoo Fine. I'll that, be a, the king that of a tattoo rock. artist would butt not rock, I mean. cover up, right? Like I Fine, you can that's call all me saying. the king of butt rock. <laughs> that's all I'm saying until it's coming. He's not out. gonna say it, but like just because I don't support. just because I don't scream doesn't make me a king of butt rock. But but he did have a cold tattoo. I did not. <laughs> he absolutely did. He had that spider from cold. I had, had sp that for a long time. All right. <laughs> I, I really extremely but, but he covered quick, it. Okay. Extremely wait, wait, fast wait. He's story. gonna be like, hey, but I covered it by a Batman tattoo. No, that's and not it's like, well, Batman is awesome. That's so not what I'm gonna say. For the Batman. fact that you had well, Batman. it is awesome. Yes, yeah. it's underneath this. Oh, it's underneath right. this. huge. That's all awesome. <laughs> that really is awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's you know, no, he's that. got really awesome tattoos Damn, that, that had to hurt right here, dude. Fuck. It, it, it you know what hurt worse was I have uh, I have venom. I don't know if you can see venom underneath oh, here. Yeah. Damn. But Possibly. uh yeah, like yeah, the inside sucks too. Oh yeah, dude, that's fire. Oh yeah, the ditch is the worst though, dude. Man, I remember right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. So the the smoke from Batman that turns into I have Lady Death covering Spider Man and Deadpool up here because I'm a Marvel nerd. Fuck yeah. But uh, the the worst tattoo ever was this little bit of smoke right right here on the inside of my elbow, and I almost uh, I almost punched my tattoo artist when he was doing it, and he was like, and he he knew it. He was like, you almost hit me just now. And I go, yeah, I, I didn't, that was not on purpose at all. And he was like, no, no, I get it. But I'm just letting you know that I know that you almost hit me right now. And that would have been a mistake for you. And I was like, no, I, I, I'm aware. You're totally aware. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't think at all. Like, I totally, but like he got there and I was like, <laughs> he was like, you almost punched me in the face right now. Yep. Yep. Been but, there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, but man, I love tattoos. Yeah. Yeah, we I can talk tattoos. about that for a whole other episode. Yeah. What's your what's your favorite tattoo that you have? Uh, I've got a giraffe. Do you, do you have a favorite? Yeah, I got this giraffe. It's supposed to be me as a giraffe. He's got like earbuds in and a little iPod around. Oh, that's it. awesome. Wait, I gotta get closer. Yeah, yeah, go, go. That's fucking sick. It's got raindrops for spots. I don't know. Why. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say the spots look really kind of teardroppy, which is awesome. That's such a cool artistic little thing that happened. Where did you Where did you get it done? I had a you roommate have... uh, that was a tattoo artist, and uh, he tattooed me in my house. Nice. That's awesome. Did Did he do most of your work? Do you have? He did like a couple pieces for me. Mo most of my stuff I got from this girl in Dallas called Jay Jury. Okay. Nice. Nice. I, I go to uh, a guy named uh, Jay Blondell. He was on uh, season seven of Ink Masters. Uh, gentle, gentle Jay. Gentle so Jay. I think if I anybody's know. watching, Gentle Jay. Giant beard. Totally awesome dude. Um, and literally, I, I, I go to him. I like book a day and uh, and I'll go and I'll bring him a, uh, a bottle of, uh, of Gentleman Jack. And I'll be like, all right. And he'll go, what are we doing today? And I'm like, I don't know. What are we doing today? And we'll just kind of go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're just going to make it happen, uh, which oh, I think okay. is awesome. So yeah. all everything that I have, honestly, is just kind of out of his brain talking to me about, like, what do you like? And I'm like, well, I love comics. I love music. I love, you know, this, that, and the other. And it's like, oh, let's do this today. Here's an idea I have. And I'm like, cool, let's sketch it out. And then we sketch it out. And I'm like, awesome, do let's it. Do it. <laughs> fucking does it. Put it on me forever. Yeah, totally, man. Totally. Yeah, and the guy the guy that I go to that wasn't the Breaking Benjamin tattoo is uh Craig right. from Space Ace Tattoo. And he does like good stuff. That's not my Breaking Benjamin tattoo. Well, yeah, because that's <laughs> that's not good. I mean he did he did my uh is that my PRS side? Yeah, he yeah. has PRS birds. So I got my PRS birds, I got my uh my data remember lyrics. Hell yeah. 
I've got nice. I've got my kids. So the way I met the guy was uh, I was going to do a zebra tattoo, uh, a zebra bracelet tattoo around my wrist. So I brought him a, a zebra brace, bracelet, a couple of different zebra things, and he drew it via um, what's it? Uh, Sharpie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he, and he goes, it's a technical term. Yeah, that's a technical term. And he goes, what do you think of this? And I was like, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And he goes and he starts. And then he like the first shot of uh, whatever cleaner they use. Yeah. Just basically washes everything off. Right. And uh, that alcohol spray. And he looks at me and he goes. Do you trust me? (laughs) And I was like. We just met. Sure. I mean, I have no other choice. Do I tell this guy? No, I don't trust you. Well, you do have a choice. You do have a choice, and I was like, "Yeah, sure." And he <laughs> just and he just kept going, and he, and he did this, and that was that was it, man. And uh, yeah, yeah, I got my kids my kids footprints tattooed on them on me. Oh, yeah, that that's, bad, that's badass. Yeah, he he's he's great. So um, yeah. So what he, was your what was your first tattoo? I got a quote from 1984, and uh, so Ooh, Orwell here. Yeah, what quote? Uh, power is not a means; it is a means to an end. Nice, excellent. One. Wow, nice, very. Cool. That's awesome. Nice. Did you um like? Was that a book that kind of struck you somehow? When did you? What What was the reason that you read that book? Even uh, I read it in high school. I think it was for a class. But uh, okay, yeah, that was that me was too. always like actually, me too. Yeah, yeah. It just really made me like start like being like, oh shit, like not everything they tell us is like for real like a lot of <laughs> right isn't it crazy that first thing that makes you think that yeah that was just <laughs> it's really like cool. where it's like oh my god like happy 11th grade why is everybody lying everything is fake <laughs> that's awesome right. that's, that's cool wait so your first tattoo was like chest mm-hmm. holy wow. shit How, what why <laughs> what what made that the choice i don't know i just wanted it and uh yeah this sucked but uh, yeah yeah i had well I it had makes every second... other tattoo easier yeah yeah some of them were like oh man that wasn't bad at all but <laughs> right my third tattoo was on my yeah you know yeah my third tattoo was on my chest and as they approached the nipple i'm like oh yeah get off my nipple <laughs> You're like I'm an inch away, dude, and you're like, no, you're right on it. You're on no, it. Oh, it yeah. sucks. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. So Fucking my uh, my first one, like to get back to the cold tattoo, uh, a <laughs> quick quick but story, it's just tattoo. so it's out there. Um, underneath my Batman, uh, my very first tattoo, I was uh, I think I was 19, maybe 20. And I was uh, I was working at um, I was working in in New York City at uh, an Applebee's, right? And so I had this friend of mine that worked with me, and we would go out every night. And we decided that like, okay, let's see if for two weeks we cannot go home unless we're off work. So only our days off we're allowed to go home, and that's when we're allowed to sleep. So otherwise, we'll work. As soon as we're off work, we'll figure out every bar in the city that like, okay, this one has free chicken wings on this day. This one has this deal on this day. This one has this deal. This one's an after hours. This one's this. And then the Applebee's in Times Square, which is where we worked. uh, Or no, Planet Hollywood. I'm sorry, not Applebee's. Mm -hmm. Applebee's was in Vegas. I worked there. Uh, Planet Hollywood in Times Square. So they had a screening room. And so their screening room is where they would bring people in and they would show them like previews of movies and we would have artists come and stuff like that. So we could come in at 5 a.m. And at 5 a.m. we could come in and we could go into the screening room and we could sit in the theater seats that would lean back and we could go to sleep for a couple of hours while the like prep cooks and everything would come in and, and set everything up. And then we would have to be there by nine. So if we got there by five or six, we could sleep till nine and then start our shift and then work. So we decided to see how long we could do this. 
and we made it three weeks. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what we did was like it was like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, our after hours was at like a Mexican place that was also in Times Square, and we would get like double margaritas and everything until like seven o'clock. And then we would go downtown to like karaoke place and go to uh, a wing place after that. And then it was an after hours and then we could get back to Planet Hollywood by 5 a.m. And then Wednesday, there was uh, free hot dogs at this strip club. And so we would go to the strip club and we would eat hot dogs and we would drink and we would tip strippers and then we would go to this other place and and so every day was like that and we did this for three weeks and one of those weeks uh i don't remember whether it was in the first second or third to be honest with you because we got it, it was such a, a weird um state we were just in stasis we weren't alive we were <laughs> we were <laughs> functioning and that was it <laughs> Right. Yeah. Because the the bartenders at the at our job knew we were doing this. And so they would feed us shots throughout the day to keep us going. So we would be going to tables to serve them with like trays and we'd be shaking the trays and we'd be like, hi, what the fuck's going on with you today? Right. Like it, it was just a mess. And one of these nights we were down at uh, a place called absolutely fourth, which is on Christopher street and West fourth in, uh, in New York city. And they have fantastic wings, fantastic wings. And right across the street from there is a tattoo place. And we were, I mean, this was probably two in the morning. And, uh, and so, so we were not in our right minds. And I was like, dude, we should go across the street and get tattoos. And he was like, yeah, we should totally go across the street and get tattoos. I didn't have any tattoos, nor did he. And we went across the street. And um, I, from what I understand, I told the guy that I wanted the spider that was on Spider-Man's back. Right? I wanted that. And I wanted it on my back. And somehow... Throughout the conversation, my friend convinced me that, like, oh, dude, it'll look awesome on your arm because you're a guitar player. And I was like, yeah, man, that sounds like the best idea ever. And so I went in and I was like, OK, give me this spider on my arm. And the guy gave me a tribal spider on my right arm on the inside. The I'm cold a right handed spider. guitar player. So I play like this. Right. So, it's so nobody spider, sees it on the inside of my right. arm. <laughs> At all. And it looks like the cold. Spider. And. About a year later, Cold's album came out, The Year of the Spider, which had literally almost ex almost exactly, they had a tribal spider on the cover of their record. Yeah, so totally exactly. And I had a tribal spider on the inside of my arm, and everybody's like, oh, you're a Cold fan. And I'm like, no, I'm not a Cold fan. Right? I love it. I had that thing for years. And, and I tormented I, him. He tormented me for years. For years. Especially um, when we played with them. Yeah. Uh, what dicks. We we way. we started immediately as bands doing like pranks on each other. I don't know. Do you have any bands that you kind of like do pranks with or anything like that? Uh, not really, but like when we're on tour, we'll do like last day pranks or something like that. Oh no. Nice. This is this is like like hey we know you now. Uh, oh yeah, we fuck we, we we yeah. fucked with each other hard, you know, which was. You. Yeah. We, it was before we were even like good friends. We were like, "Oh yeah, let's let's really test the limits of friendship before we're friends." Yeah, totally. That's 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 why we get along so well. That's why that's why we like do these eating challenges because we're like, well, you have no other choice because I'm calling you a wuss, right? If yeah. you don't do this, and... right? <laughs> so I'm we, you know, we we messed with their band. Um, by blaming them for some shit at our at our studio that we all rented, and uh, got them in trouble, and then they, they wrote they wrote they... our band they wrote so our band was called Farther from Resolution, and it, and they wrote in silver sharpie stands out FFR rules with a Z very on. Cool. Yeah. On a Billy Idol poster above a 
above the toilet in our rehearsal studio. Right. So they got which immediately trouble. got us heat because apparently it's cool to write FFR rules. Well, you guys were a Z band. You didn't do S's. Above above the toilet on a, <laughs> a fucking Billy Idol poster. Right. So then they filled our... Uh, we have two doors to our studio. No, they, no, 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 they, no. That was a shrink well, wrap. Whatever. They, they, Oh, no. They shrink wrapped my van while we were playing on stage one night. <laughs> in, in the pouring rain. Right. Oh, it was great. Um, what did we do? Oh, no. We, we duct taped them into their studio while they were rehearsing. Yeah. So we duct taped their door shut filled uh the inside there's two doors we filled the inside with packing peanuts and our own demos so that when they opened the door in all of our demos and packing peanuts would come in and then they couldn't get out of their room and they had to call the owner of the studio to get them out of the room they filled our doors with uh the same packing peanuts because mcdonald's uh play uh ball pit balls oh my god on like a Tuesday night, we came home from a show in New York City at like three like in the morning. Three, we all had to work yeah. in the next. We all had to work the next morning. We opened our door and just ball pit balls fell oh, out. <laughs> so we had we have we have a long standing thing going on, which is amazing. It's it's a love hate <laughs> relationship. Yeah, and that's why we we love and hate each other. So I, I encourage you to do this with any band that you all, find. All bands, <laughs> all bands. <laughs> And take videos so this way I can watch. Yes, them. please post please. post those videos. Um, it'll only bring you closer to the band. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so so we did all that shit to each other, uh, which has nothing to do with the tattoos, but it, it does explain our uh, our combative relationship. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Skags. Where do we find you? What? what yeah, please. We've what, been down here too where long. Where do we see Outline in Color? Where do we hear Outline in Color? What do we? What's going on with you guys? <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell, uh, tell people. Outlineincolor.com, outlineincolor.store for merch, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, slash Outline in Color, all spelled out. Um, if you're looking to find me, I'm Skags, but S K with a four instead of an A G G S S K four G G S. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, we got music on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, all that stuff. Just type in an outline and color. And it's not just music; it's fucking good music. Yeah, it's, it's really <laughs> like, good it's music. It's really good. Like you guys have, you guys have put stuff out throughout the whole pandemic, mm -hmm. and it's all been good and and you're continuing to do so and you guys are, you guys are going to have another ep out soon right oh yeah, yeah. and then another one <laughs> and then another one it's, so it's inspiring to other bands other bands need to follow suit honestly like um my band personally i know we came back from um nam a couple of years ago and we had this idea of like okay we need to focus everything on online stuff and we need to focus everything on singles and we need to focus everything on content and stuff like that and we started to do that and you guys are a band that totally inspires with that because you embrace it you do it you you're consistent with it and um not only are you consistent but you're consistent with quality too which is which is tough to do it, it, it is. really is like honestly like, like we gotta top ourselves and it's getting harder to to keep doing that but um dude you know, that's awesome it, it's inspiring for us too you know because if we yeah. do something and it's like it goes pretty well or it goes better than something we've done in the past we're like fuck that was awesome now how do we top that <laughs> you know like yeah. so always just trying to raise the bar and keep it going absolutely great, so dude. if you're if you are a fan if you're watching right now and you're a fan of something heavy or you're a fan of craving strange or you're a fan of bacon is my passion and you and you like the fact that we're putting out content check out outline and color man. definitely check out outline and color because they're a band that's doing it right they're doing it the way that we're approaching doing it and they're doing it the way that we're going to be doing it they're an inspiration and they're absolutely 
excellent at it. Their music is fantastic. Their content is fantastic. Um, we wouldn't have them on the show if they weren't, honestly, right. because uh, it, if they sucked, I, <laughs> we wouldn't even bother. <laughs> but, because right. why would well, we do that? Well, that's a good that? point. Well, no, honestly, like, because I don't care if you're entertained. I just care if, like, like on, I, I oh, just care good? if I like it, to be honest. I care about entertaining me and you and, yeah. and whoever we're talking to. So if if you're a person that likes anything that we've liked, you're you're going to love this band. You're absolutely going to love this band. You really are. Uh, you're going to love everything that they do. They've got everything for you. I mean, every style is kind of represented. Um there's, Especially in the there's new stuff. pop sensibility. There's hardcore going so on like, in there. So like, so like in the older everything. stuff, it was it, there was definitely a direction, but like the newer stuff, especially, is is just a little, a little bit more all over the place, and all over the place in a good way. Yeah. Because it, it because controlled can, chaos. Yeah, controlled chaos is definitely oh, the yeah. way to put it. It there's rap, there's trap, there's there's metal there's oh man low tune guitars dude it's where i'm a going. sucker for low tune guitars i love it he what? doesn't like it. he's like oh well i'll go to bass then well you know what i love low low tune I, guitars is the shit i just I'm, like using the low octave thing that's like my my big thing with all those just like simple like rocky riffs like when yeah. you throw on the low octave uh doubler it sounds so yeah cool. i'm all for doublers i'm all doublers, for doublers are great i'm not i'm not, for so, I'm not so down with playing in like g sharp and shit like that i don't i don't like when my guitar is like <laughs> dude I, I got i got my seven string i got my seven string i just on, i just want to like More appropriate though because at least you keep the tension you know like the guitar yeah. is designed to be played in that tuning so that's cool but when people are playing like sixers and they drop it down to like a sharp i'm just like and i know that nowadays there's guitars that can totally do it but there's people out there that do it there's and, no reason yeah, they're like on Don't a Stratocaster, that. and they're that's like, why Don't bass. That. That's why bass was made. Single so, coil on. That's why on bass was G created. Sharp? What? They were like, guitars shouldn't be here. So let's make something with thicker strings, so <laughs> that there's still tension and there's still like action when well, it happens. I, I play twelve. I play twelves and fourteen. Well, so. yeah, you're whatever. I'm an asshole. No, uh, you're not say, an asshole. Say, Just an asshole. you know, kind of weak. Kind of weak. No, uh, honestly. Uh, the music's yeah, great. Just... It really is. It's it's fucking awesome. Um, jerk. I honestly can't wait for the 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 moment where we do something in Tulsa or near Tulsa, mm -hmm. and you guys aren't on tour, and you happen to be home, and we can hang out in a room together I'll and figure uh, out record figure some out music really or just uh, drink some drinks there. or just hang out. Um, just hopefully, we'll be able to do that to super Tulsa. soon. Yeah, I. Dude, it's been awesome having <laughs> with you. It really has. It's been yeah, really man. cool. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, thanks Thank for doing for it, dude. Part of it. Absolutely, man. You guys have a good one. Yeah, you too, man. We're gonna sign off now. Um, you hang out so we can talk to you for a little bit later because you know we're gonna hang out with you after we uh, after we say goodbye to the people. But uh, if you have any last things to say to the people that are listeners of Bacon is My Podcast, this is your moment. So please do it now. Sure. Uh, Imposter Syndrome Part 2 is coming out in April. Keep an eye out for that. We've got a lot more songs coming out this year, a lot more music videos, and uh, COVID regulation preventing. We will uh, be touring as well if that's in the cards. So just keep an eye out for us, and hopefully we'll get to see you in a venue real soon. Hell yeah. Find them. Every link is going to be in our, in our uh, All description. Of them. Check the descriptions. Yeah. Check it out. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and uh, everybody that's listening. This has been Bacon is my podcast. So uh, if if Check I can out say one, Bacon is my pod. Yeah, everywhere. Bacon is my pod everywhere. And uh, and I will say to you, if I've learned anything from today, I will say that uh, music, sir, because you're all over it. Music is your bacon. <laughs> so for everyone out there, what's your bacon? Thanks for seeing us. Thanks for hanging out. Later. Night.